Hello, I'm Peachy. I'm Patrick. Hello, I'm Jeff. And today we are joined by a, a familiar guest for me, unfamiliar for potentially everyone else, Tom Hibbard. Hello, Hello Tom Hibbard. Mr. Peach, how now, are you? Uh, I'll get you to introduce yourself. Welcome to Sidetracked. I'm calling it that now because that's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Sidetracked. So we know each other from Workshop. I used to work alongside you. You worked in the Hobby Products Department. Yeah, we used to sit this close yep. with a divider here. We used yes. to get told off all the time. Talking sharp and biscuits. Talking sharp and biscuits. So <laughs> familiar subject. So okay, I'm Tom Hibbard. Uh, I worked for Games Workshop for 20 years on and off and then oh. 16 years continuous service from uh, retail through to White Dwarf, colour production, hazardous prod- ha- hazardous products production, Ooh. which is all the paints and glues and all of that kind Off of stuff. You, like looking um, for the army painters. And then I started doing some hobby products, so stuff, your p- tools and paints and things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually that department got a lot bigger and I became the senior hobby products designer for Games Workshop for mm. eight or so years. And then I left in 2016. So it's been, yeah. a, been a while. Yeah. Um, but it's, they've only just stopped releasing stuff that I had a hand in. So that's... <laughs> that's what? <mad. laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I sort of, still had a bit of insight into stuff up I, about a couple, wow. 18 months ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Okay. I thought I, I thought it was like 2016 um, would be like, wow, the lead time on hobby products. Is <laughs> like... some, some projects, which I'm sure we'll get into later, it's yeah. a very long time to gestate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. So you um, basically contacted us because we, we have strong <clears throat> opinions about products and all sorts of things. And you, you contacted us and said, I have examples and questions and answers to all these things. I'd love to come on and have a chat. So thank you for coming on to do that. Um, yeah, there were some things you talked about. Yeah, and I was like, actually, I know, no, not that. It's just, I know the answer to that, and I know, yeah, yeah. and I know why. And I either designed it, or someone else I know designed it, or I had a hand in it somewhere. Yeah. Um, and or I know why things didn't happen. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and this is fascinating. And I probably got a good commercial handling of the finances behind the business and products behind the business because mm. we used to run the numbers as well, and used to have a hand in looking at forecasting and sales prices and yeah, how much things cost yeah, to make yeah. and group margin and all these really boring financial things that some people don't really seem to trigger because it's such a big company that mm. doesn't realise because people scale a lot from their own experiences or if they run a small company they scale from their own small company and they don't realise that Games Workshop I find it's a medium sized company in the grand scheme of things mm. but it still turns over hundreds of millions of pounds mm. a year Yeah, and it has an enormous set of costs associated with it and that's probably something that run, will run through the whole conversation is just the sheer cost of making things and buying yeah. things and yeah, sending yeah. things and retaining things. and So you, you mentioned about forecasting as well. That's interesting because we, we obviously discuss about like certain things being released and there not being enough of them. So that would be interesting to get your insights on <clears throat> potentially that side of it as well. Um, I'd like to lead in hard and fast with... So bad. <laughs> name of my sex tape uh, how many have you got quite a lot <laughs> I need to tell Mrs Peach I'm surprised you've only got one child <laughs> uh, that I know of <laughs> oh. not true not true um, all go on back pedal <laughs> so we got talking and you had a hand in the contrast paints if not led the initial so they yes so the contrast paint Back when I was into it, it was something called Stain and Shade. That was the kind of Stain and Shade. Me- Stain and Shade was the name of the was the name of the product. Um, and I left, so I left twenty sixteen. I left before Contrast mm. came out. Yeah. And this is what I talked about initially about how long things take to just take. Um, in order to make Contrast paint happen, just a little aside, we had to hire a member of staff. Yeah. So we had to hire a guy. I actually, worked in the Warhammer World team as a scenery builder. Oh yes, I, I know him. Um, well. But he 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 had abandoned a chemistry PhD. <laughs> so we ended up effectively hiring a chemist. Wow. Because we, we needed a chemist to talk to the paint company's chemists to, so they could talk the same language with each other. Because yeah. we would say, we want it to be more red. And, but yeah. actually, or we yeah. need it to stick to yeah. the plastic more. But what does that actually yeah. mean yeah. In, in chemistry terms? Yeah. So you could talk about all the viscosities and the flow rates and all these weird things when, and do hundreds of experiments that when you've got a product designer, they're like, I don't want to do this. This is really boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Painting 17 sets of red over it. Yeah, I don't want to do that as well. Yeah. yeah. So he spent a long time. And he had, at least he had the brain where he found that even vaguely interesting yeah. to actually have hundreds and hundreds of samples. Oh, wow. So it was a very difficult project. Um, it originally came about as a result of another project which was. Games Workshop model sales, you might well remember this, 2015, 2016, 2014, were declining. Yeah. And the company was in trouble. They didn't really announce it at the time, but they were in quite yeah. a lot of trouble. At one point, I think they were about four, four to six weeks out of running out of cash flow. Wow. And having to lock the doors. 
Crikey. Um, I do remember there was a manager meeting where they discussed and saying that we are 15 million in debt. <laughs> Not any more than that. <laughs> we, and we may not be able to pay the, pay wages. Yeah. Mm. So they had to get all the senior managers into a, into a room yeah. and discuss it. So, oh dear. But we knew things were, were going. We knew model sales were down. We knew model sales were going downhill because yeah. we could. We had access to some finance to the financials. We could pull the data because people would come to us and say we're not selling enough glue. So it's one of the managers would come. Well, we're not selling enough glue. Okay, great, fine. We'll go and redesign the glue, or we'll go and have a look at glue. But first, can we have a look at the sale of toy soldiers? And you'd see the fact that the sales of glue were absolutely tracking. Yeah, the they were linked. Toys, toys, yeah, toys, of course, toys. yeah. And they would go, oh, we're not selling enough uh, figure cases. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. And look, oh, look, the sales of... Yeah. <laughs> in some yeah. cases, they were dislocated. Yeah. In the, in the figure case world, other people had come up with, we needed to innovate yeah. a bit yeah. more there. Yeah. But normally, it was they were directly tracking. So we're like, okay. So we're clearly selling less toy soldiers to less people. The price of the toy soldier is going up. At some point, we're going to end up selling one Space Marine for two hundred million pounds to some guy, that, and, that, and that's that's going to be yeah. the business model, which is um, it was, it's going to break before it gets yeah, there. Yeah. But we need to recruit, and there was no emphasis on recruitment. Mm. People were still doing intro games, but there was no real emphasis in store because our scheduler was, was had just come from retail. So yes, we, yeah. We just started quizzing him a lot about what was going on in retail, and they were like, we haven't got the product. You can do an intro game. Yeah. Someone wants to get into the hobby. It's going to cost them a minimum of 80 quid or yeah. something along those lines. Because yeah, you needed yeah. mm. a box of Space Marines, you needed tools, you needed glue, you needed a starter paint set, which wasn't really a starter paint set at the time. It was really not fit for purpose. You needed to spend 80 That pounds. brush, man. And, that, and the starter brush. I mean, I've got one. <laughs> that's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely terrible. Um, and it was... That's a, that's a really bad first experience. Oh, I'm really excited. I'm really yeah, excited. Yeah, I'm really yeah. excited. Yeah. What can I take home? I'm going to sell you 17 products for 80 quid. Well, no parent's going to do that. No. Right? Well, the, the, I'm sure there were a few, but the vast majority of parents yeah. are not going to not yeah. to do that off the basis of one 15-minute interaction. So we desperately needed a recruitment products. Yeah. And then you start looking at, okay, so why aren't people buying toy soldiers? Partly it was they're not being, we don't have the right products. Partly it's because it's actually really hard to get going painting your first toy soldier. Mm. When you've never had experience before, mm. and, yeah. you, and you're a 14-year-old boy with... Um, I'm still like that now, to be fair. <laughs> absolutely no hand-eye coordination because your nerves have got longer because you're growing and you're kind of smashing your... And then you look at the box art and then you look at your model and you, your first experience of painting is like, that's rubbish. Yeah, vast disappointment. <laughs> 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 vast yeah. Experience. <laughs> and we want, we, what we wanted was a product. You could quite simply get that magic, oh, it's really cool. Yeah. And at a point, that was shades. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I remember them coming through and we're like, ooh. So you base a model... And then you'd put a shade on, and yeah. you'd go, oh, it's really cool, I can see all the detail. But it still took two stages to get to that point. Mm. Yeah. And what we wanted was a product where you could just rattle can it, and then put your put your contrast on, and then see all the wonderful detail in your Citadel miniature. And then see all the wonderful detail in your Citadel miniature, and have it there in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And we're just looking for ways of doing that. And that kind of stain and shade came up. I also happened to be painting an Iandan army at the time. Yeah. And another guy in the team was painting Nurgle. Who was that? Yeah, I know. You know sure. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so we were like, okay, we need a paint. Yeah. We need something that yeah. we can hit these models with that will just bring out all the details straight away and make us feel really good about our product. Mm. That we can sell to these people mm. and we can sell to everyone. Um, so the first ones would be yellow and green because it was I and, yeah. and yellow and, and Nurgle. And then the browns were quite easy. Yeah. Like I remember my brown horse. I do. <laughs> so, this, so, this, so the other designer I used to work with um, developed a brown, and he and but you, again, same thing. You got a horsey, put a brown on it, and you're like, "This is amazing." So he used to go around showing everyone his brown horse. He's like, My brown horse. <laughs> <laughs> and we had the Iand in yellow, and we had the Nurgle guys, and those colours were quite reasonably successful. But these were this was us getting getting medium from the factory, yeah, getting some random pigments from the factory, getting some other paints, and just at, and playing around with it. And yeah. We really were playing around with it. But for those colours, it absolutely worked. Yeah. And we were like, this is brilliant. Yeah. That's, we need to make stain and shade. And we tried really, really hard. And as product designers, one, we didn't have the patience to just sit there and really go through it. And we just didn't have the chemical knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we hired we hired the, the chemist in, effectively, yeah, the, into the team. The chemist. The chemist. Played by uh, Jason Statham. Right? <laughs> 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 it's not quite so bald as I... It wasn't quite so manly as us, Mr. Pete. Very Welsh as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really, really good guy, but yeah. Um, but we really wanted to overcome that kind of hump. And I don't know if you've ever come across... You've come across 
engagement curves in advertising? No. So in advertising, computer games and movies, mm. you always start off with something that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I showed this to my boss. We've had the same boss for a while. Um, showed this, uh, I basically got him around to my house to play Xbox in the morning and gave him bacon rolls. And went, right, we're going to play the intros to like four computer games. Yeah. Because he hadn't, you know, he's a 50-year-old guy. He hadn't yeah. been played any console games. Well, like, I want you to get this experience of starting a new starting a new thing yeah okay so you and, and what i think we should do is make painting like this yeah so in a computer game you get this really you get this really big experience right at the beginning and that's your kind of first two minute rah, and you're just button mashing and having yeah. a great time and things yeah. are exploding you know like great and then it calms down a bit yeah and then quite reasonably quickly you have another experience it's not quite as good as this experience but yeah it's still pretty good and then yeah. it calms down a bit and then you have another experience and this... then right at the end the end experience is better than the first experience yeah and that's an engagement curve and you get it in movies you get that i was going to say you get this in movies like it has to be something every 10 minutes yes um otherwise people lose interest and you got to get a win and when, our theory was you've got to get a win in painting on a similar kind of well, it's, it's, similar it's kind a of james curve. bond beginning isn't it yeah absolutely yeah yes yeah. yeah. yeah, it's simplest way of explaining yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly james bond movie and a series of acts and we thought painting <gasps> should be in a series of acts contrast paint the movie <laughs> <laughs> there's the thumbnail <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this movie. <laughs> oh. And one of the problems was with is that painting took this bit. Oh, great! I've got my box. Yeah. Look at these heavy metal miniatures; they're amazing. Yeah, I yeah. can do that. Yeah. And then it took absolutely ages to get anywhere interesting because you had to base coat everything, and you had to really good and with a terrible brush and a really good brush control, and and then you finally got to put some shade on, but it took way too long. Yeah. And what we wanted to do was just compress this and make. It, much more achievable. Yeah, yeah. We never said easy. Easy is a, not a great word because yeah. it's a hobby. It should have craft in it. Yes. Which, yeah. is, which was one of the principles the team had all the time. Yeah. Is that it need, we need to talk about achievability rather than making it easy because easy is not, you don't have a sense of accomplishment when you do something that's easy. Mm. No. It's got sure to be it's. achievable and you've got to be a sense of craft to it because it's a craft based hobby. So, but we still wanted to have that curve and that was really important. Yeah. So, achie achievable or not easy was one of the guiding principles that we yeah. went through. And contrast paint was basically made there to make things achievable, not easy. Yeah. And we also full well knew that as soon as it got into the hands of customers, they'd do anything they wanted with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they'll put it through airbrushes, they'll use it, they'll, yeah. they'll use it as yeah. a tint or as a glaze. Yeah. They'll brush it or they do anything with it. It's great. It's con it's contrast through airbrush is sensational. It's supposed to be yeah. really good. I've not done it myself, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's te very telling because we were given a, when contrast paint, the, was hitting, um, and like me and Duncan were doing videos, it was, we were experimenting, playing around, we were, oh, we could do this, we could do this. It was like, no, it's been marketed in this very particular way. You must do it in this very particular way. And as a painter, you're just like, but that's not really how, it, it's just a tool. It's not a separate paint guide. So it was really hard to describe to non-creatives how to yeah. use it. And then eventually other people on the internet were part of the community that were like influencers or people that just like get stuff on a warmer community would do what they want with it. And then you get the non-creators going, we should be doing that. Why are we not doing that? Well, like we've been talking to you like till we're blue in the face that that's what we should be doing. But you need someone to show you. So that's what we, you know yeah. you have to do is physically show these things to some people. Otherwise, then, they don't get it. Yeah, and the part of the issue is you've got to bear in mind that Games Workshop's core customer base is not what most people think it is. Mm. When you look, when you go through, well, because we're in it through... Um, as much financial kind of customer data as we could to find out who was buying stuff. And the, the single biggest buyer of things was um, 30 to 50 year old women. Mm -mm. So the people that spent the most money uh, in yeah, yeah. Yeah. The mums. Mums. Were, were the mums, right? Yeah. Um, and they're buying it for their probably 12 to 20 year old yeah. child. Yeah. Um, and they didn't have the buying power. It was the parent or the yeah. guardian or the yeah. auntie or yeah. the big sister or whoever Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. had the buying power so we need a reality the games workshop customer probably were it may well have changed mm. i think it's now re games workshops now reached out back to its old base and bought more people back in but certainly at that time they were spending the most money off the data that we could see yeah and it was so bear in mind so the customer isn't the 30 year old person that's put in contrast through an airbrush yeah, yeah. the customer is the 14 year old that's asking his mother to buy Yes. So that, that's the customer. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of people don't really appreciate that because they get super interested in their thing. Yeah, yeah. And they don't realise that there's a much bigger thing. Do you remember, you know, we've been talked about the hobby trumpet. Remind me, because I'll probably go, <laughs> oh, yes. Because I've heard so many analogies over the years and they've so, all mer merged into one at one so, point. So the hobby trumpet, effectively, you have, you have a V. Yeah. Okay. And, and my open side of the fingers, 
is everyone coming into the hobby. It's yeah. the first time they walk through Games Workshop door. Yeah. And it's a world of wonder. And everything's in Oh, new. this is like the bath analogy then. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or like the funnel. Yeah, the funnel. Yeah. But, <laughs> the funnel, yeah. but the funnel, no, or, it's sideways funnel. Well, we call it the hobby trumpet because it's sideways and it's more fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then as people progressed down the hobby trumpet, <laughs> yeah. they got more and more niche. Yeah. Until they're, t- until they're painting heresy resin models yellow as imperial yeah. fists. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then most of the main range is absolutely irrelevant to them whatsoever. In yeah. fact, most of the paint range is completely irrelevant and they're probably not using Games Workshop paints anyway yeah, yeah. But at that point. Yeah. And they're probably putting them through an airbrush and they're probably using everyone else's stuff. So yeah. really, and also, and you know, Forge World or whatever they're called now, um, are dealing with that person. Yeah, yeah. That's not our customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's not actually any money here. So if we start making products for these people, yeah. there's no money in it. Yeah. It might be for a, a small company, yeah. for a small uh, company that makes custom bases or a small company that makes weathering powders. Or There's money in it for them. Yeah. For GW, Big Games Workshop, Big Sit Bell, the money's all here. Yeah. The yeah. money's all, all, all at this opening point yeah. the trumpet. That's yeah. where the spend is. And also, bear in mind, most people only last one to two years anyway, in reality. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 ever, they were teenage boys, other things happen. Teenage, yeah. get, teenage girls get, get, get distracted as well. Everyone gets distracted by other things in life. Yeah, life happens. And yeah. not many people stick. Yeah. And the weirdly, they do come back. They do come back. But then they become that more focused yeah. person. <laughs> and, they've, and they've probably done a jump, and now they're, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Um, and we did do some consumer profiling that's really quite boring, and I probably won't go through. But, <laughs> but we did look at who, who you know, that, that first person, and then the journey. Did, if they stuck, what yeah. were their spending habits? What did they look like? What, what brands did yeah. they enjoy? Yeah. What was their... And then there was another pathway, which was people that came back in with a bit mm. more money and a bit more, you know, they've been been through uni, got their first professional job, yeah. suddenly find themselves a bit of time and they're like, oh, cool, I remember that, it was great. And they go into a store and they see a shiny thing and they're like, I'm going to do that shiny thing. Yeah. And then there was the really old people and then there was the, the other ones, which was the mums and aunties and everyone else. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. So I think for a lot of people, they get really, yeah, they get really excited about their thing, but they don't necessarily think that. And because they're excited about their thing, they don't realise that the... The market is actually way more, way more bigger than them, and there are many companies like a lot of the stuff you've got behind, yeah, which caters to them, yeah. yeah. And we were not shy about, in certainly in our team, we weren't worried about that because that's you're chasing, you're chasing yeah. five grand. Well, we were looking at hundred, so, we were looking at hundred grand minimum. Yes, we weren't making hundred grand from it. Yeah, we're not interested. That's, that's, not, that's not being callous. That's just yes, that's yes. just life. Yeah. How yeah. business works. Yeah. yeah. So that does explain because um, we, <clears throat> I used to get gassed a lot and like on live and, and stuff like. Why does Games Workshop not make airbrushes? Why does Games Workshop not do wet palettes? Uh, and you're right. It's because that's more focused further down the line to the the more expert painter, I suppose. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we will talk about the air gun. <laughs> which well, I we'll used. Do, let's go into airbrushes. I think airbrushes and wet palettes mm-hmm. are a really interesting example of why we don't. Why I'm going to say we because I, can I, I just ask? I, a, I can can I ask a, some contrast paint related questions first before yes. we move on? Yes. yes. Um, is one you said um, you know uh, GW was in was in some financial trouble, and then we talked about contrast paint. Was was that sort of like? Did you save Games Workshop? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we missed that one, didn't we? <laughs> He's just constantly looking for a thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> Comments. I saved Games Workshop. Yeah. I think the team I was on developed products for recruitment and retention at the right time for the business. Yeah. Now, whether oh. now whether we saved Games Workshop, yeah. I think you, yeah. you can't ever say that. No. But, but I think we certainly developed the right products at the right time. And then when my boss was asked... We're in trouble. Can you develop some products? He had a load of he had a project oh, great. on the shelf. Yes. He had products on the shelf, and he was able to go. Great, we've done these. Yeah, now, I left very shortly after that. Yeah, um, but I certainly think yeah, we we helped. I would suspect yes. we helped, right? Yeah. And it's quite, yeah. I don't want to be big headed about it, but they were the right products because yeah. we developed a range of products yeah. that were like twenty quid, yeah, thirty quid, fifty quid, hundred quid, yes, and all of them were starter products. Yeah, <laughs> so depending on the budget, you can walk away with them. And I think contrast contrast came out after all of that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. But I certainly think it's the other advantage. Contrast is it helps, and this one that that was what that was the marketing was. It helps you get your grey armies on the battlefield yeah. and, and yeah. with some paint yeah. on them, you know. Yeah. But if I look back as well, it's like we were looking at we were playing around with contrast a year before it came out, long before that. Yeah, it took a long time developing. Yeah. You guys had some of the prototypes. Yeah, really yeah. early on, like literally four or five. Contrast took five years. Yeah. To get it right. Yeah. Wow. And they had one shot to get it right. Yeah. So they needed to make it right. So I was glad they waited so long. Yes. I was surprised because I thought it, de- it was dead. Yeah. Because I'd lost my, you know, no one was talking to me anymore. And then suddenly I saw it and I was like, hey, yeah. Stayed in Shades Alive. Yeah. 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 Shade. yeah. <laughs> Sounds uh, like a crime duo. And, <laughs> and, and then sort of my second question was going to be like, contrast paint, I think 
I had at the start, I think people were like, eh, don't like it. Maybe it's something new. But as time has progressed, I think it's become one of the most loved paint ranges full stop. Well, you can tell because you've got other companies trying to mimic And, and this, and this yeah. is what I was going to say. So now, I mean, we've got the Army Painter uh, set there. Yep. And that is version two because the version one reactivated a little bit. Um, and they d potentially didn't get that quite right. Um uh, Vejo have released their own range as well. And May I say, are oh, very nice. I've been playing around with those. They, oh, they are very nice. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Um, Got a nice matte finish as well. Oh, cool. Mm, okay. Love it. Um, and yeah, you, your thoughts on that? Like, did you think, oh, like in, in you know, 10 years time or whatever, like, like it seems like every paint range is, paint brand is going to have to have its own contrast range now. I don't know what my question is, but. I, know. Okay, um, so <laughs> I think it's an observation, really. <laughs> yeah. so I think it's a tribute. So there's two things. Two things I'd like to like to say about that is it took a long time for the other manufacturers to catch up. Yes, and that's a tribute yes. to the team that did that. Yeah, mm. at Games Workshop after I left, that it and they got spent the time getting the product right. And when they got it out and they got it right, it was so good. There was, yeah. Yeah. There was always some problems with it. It was a new way of painting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it took a long time for the other manufacturers to come out with stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some of it was better. Some a lot of it wasn't. Um, Paints are really complicated, mm. really complicated. And people, it's not just like grinding some pigment up and putting it in a medium. Plus, you've got to work out what the medium is and what the viscosity is. But there's biocides in there to stop. What? Yeah, so <laughs> you did, don't eat your paint. Um, they're not, they're not, to uh, they're not toxic. They're not toxic, <laughs> but there's not really. There's antifungal agents, there's biocides, yeah. there's anti bubbling agents, there's matting agents, there's all sorts of stuff. There's flow reducers, there's yeah. surface tension reducers. There's so, loads, so much stuff that goes into a good paint. Yeah. That, do, you, do you remember the shades when they went off? Yeah. <laughs> So the previous enough. shades, you had like Devlin Mud, Bad Air Black, and I've still got a few pots of them. Yeah, I can I can smell when the when when they're close by. Oh, because they've gone off because it's got like organic. There is some organic matter in yeah. there, and they didn't put enough. We didn't put enough biocides in it. Yeah. Oh. So, so they went off. Yeah. I used to base. This is before I used Agbrac Surf Shade. I used to base all my uh, Drakari using Devlin Mud. I do like sand, and I like do Devlin Mud and make it like the the sands of the arena and put like bits of blood on it. And I just finished doing a load of vehicles because it was like for some. Battle report or something like that years back for White Dwarf. And I got my Devlin mod open, opened it, it hummed, started applying it to all the models. I was in the army painting room and the door was closed. We were all like feeling really nauseous. It was really sick. And that <laughs> smell wouldn't go for two weeks. <laughs> smell like, uh, it, it, was like, it was like sauerkraut, like gone off cabbage. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, cabbage. Wow. Yeah. 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 Don't I remember, that, I remember I remember Peachy coming through and going, guys, I think you need to know about this. And we're like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> oh, no. But there was a really close relationship between the army painting team and our team because we used to wander over there and annoy them. But also, they were really we could prototype with them all the time. We give them stuff. Just try this out. Do you want to have a go with these little brush, these brushes for a while? Yeah. yeah. Just try these paints out for a bit. And they'd either take them home and use them their own projects, or they'd very quietly put it into something else they were doing. Or yeah. We will come to it later. But the paint handle was a really, really interesting one because a lot of the um, painters, I wouldn't say are negative but they just have strong opinions about new things they don't like change so like, so they got like guys like toby coming in and you're going we've got this development we're trying this like oh that's never going to work and eventually they made that Wait, well and yeah not let's... a single army paint was like this is rubbish they're like this is really good it's really comfy it's amazing so i mean yeah so i i interrupted to go back to talk about contrast paint um which i, I feel like i've asked my questions now okay thank you very much um yeah, well, 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 should we do? Should we do airbrushes and? Oh yeah, you wanted to talk about airbrushes, airbrushes and wet, wet, to talk airbrushes about. and wet palettes because I hear this all the time as well. Yes, and one of the reasons I came on this show is I hear loads of people talking in, in, on the internet and saying comments, and I'm like, "That's right, you're wrong, you're wrong." <laughs> <laughs> all the trolls, you're Tom, wrong. I need to tell trolls. you, I need to tell you off. Um, <laughs> That's so, the title of the video. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of talked about Games Workshops financial stuff. We, yeah. need to, we need to make hundred thousand pounds. It's not that's, that's yeah. not a, that's that's just a number I've plucked yeah. out of my yeah. head. But it's to make a point. Yes, it's, we need to make a hundred thousand pound a product um, to justify the development time because you know you're putting a reasonably expensive designer onto a project. It's not just the cost of that project; it's the loss of opportunity of another project they could be working on. Mm. And then um, there's another thing about margin. It's a big company. Yeah, it has a massive amount of overheads. We've got to pay for this guy and all of his biscuits, right? So it's going to cost <laughs> a fortune. All that, all that wasted time where he's just watching sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I was painting and watching. All that. <laughs> yeah. 
Lots of overhead. <laughs> Lots of overhead. <laughs> yeah. I, I love doing that. If if um <laughs> my lord. Uh, me 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 and my, me and my girlfriend, if we try and justify something that we've done when we're driving, if we say <laughs> officer at the end <laughs> and, and then if you think, No, that doesn't work, I was definitely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I might try that. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a so Games Workshop has what's called a group margin, hmm. which effectively is how much profit it makes on every single pro- product. I'm not going to reveal that number, but, it, no, no. but there is a number. Yeah. Um, which also, and a lot of other people will refer to that as markup. Hmm. So you hear a lot about oh, yeah, Games markup, Workshop's markup, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Um, the problem with something like an airbrush is one, we can't manufacture it in house. We don't have the skills, the institutional knowledge, the machines, everything else. Hmm. We're going to have to buy it from someone else. Yeah. When you buy it from someone else, you're probably also buying it in from someone else again. So you're not buying it straight from the manufacturer. You're probably having to go through another person yeah. who's already taken a cut. Then it's got to come to you and you've got to take a cut. Yeah. And then you've got to put your group margin, your, like- your, your markup on it. It then becomes more expensive than everyone else's version of the same airbrush. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? And you've but it's got, got, got skulls on it, right? It's got skulls on it. So, we, <laughs> so that's partly how you deal with it. But most people aren't prepared to bring it for a... <laughs> so tape measures work. <laughs> that's my, probably my favourite ever product, that one. But that one as well. um, that so sometimes you can just put skulls on it and yeah. put a mark-up. But for a, any serious painter buying a yes. high, decent high-end airbrush, that just ain't going to work. No. Right? They're just not prepared to pay 50% more or twice mm. as much. And we tried like three or four times mm. to try just to try and get it on in. And we'd maybe go with 10% extra just as a matter of convenience. You can yeah. go into a games workshop store and you can just buy an airbrush. Yes. You didn't have to send mail order it. Maybe people are prepared. We just couldn't get it down yeah. cheaper. And we tried. We really did because we well accepted airbrushing was yeah was the thing. Yeah. Why we did the air range in the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was why we couldn't do an airbrush. Yeah, because of markup. Yeah. Just because of markup. And we need the markup. One we got, there's also shareholders to worry about. Yeah. You've got to pay dividends and their share price and yeah. everything else. That's the thing people forget about games. Yeah, it's a publicly PLC. traded company. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's a PLC. It's got shareholders and other people to worry about other than... So, that's again, that's another set of costs on top of everything else. Yeah. Sometimes you can get... You can leverage that. And we used to call it commercial advantage. It basically means we can buy a lot and we've got a lot of money behind us. Yeah. Mm. We can buy 40,000 of those and we can get custom... Nice number. And nice we can number. get custom steel moulds made. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> So we can commit, we can pay for the custom steel moulds, and we can make enough of that thing. Yeah. That the the individual item cost comes down enough that we can sell it, and people don't go, oh, it's horrendous. Yeah. yeah. Can't do that with an airbrush. Wet yeah. palette's an interesting one. Mm. Fundamentally, wet palette. Anyone can make a wet palette. Yeah. Yeah. Home, yeah they can just easy. buy a bit of Tupperware and get some stuff and put it in a thing. Yeah. Right? Um, other people were making wet palettes, but what they had, what they had done, they hadn't commissioned the plastic. People have now, but at that, yeah. at that point, they went off and just bought a plastic box off the, a nice plastic box off the shelf and then sold it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a massive markup, <laughs> as, a, as a wet palette. Yeah. Um, the other thing about wet palettes is what a wet palette's designed to do. Get your paint wet. And so it lasts longer. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. Why, why would we want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so you can sell more paint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, none of, no one on the hobby team used one. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. Didn't, we didn't use one. Yeah. And most mm. of the army painters didn't use them either. No. Because they didn't have to, because they got free paint. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it didn't really, it wasn't really a thing. And also, I, I, I was only introduced to them when I started seeing heavy metal using them. And yeah. then it was lockdown and people on live were using them because it was really warm. And then I, and silks so just made me one from some Tupperware. And I was like, oh, that's all right. Um, but I still use palettes. I, still I don't know, I don't them. like them. But it's, so there is a, there's definitely a personal preference. You try and avoid yeah. personal preference in your own, because most of the stuff I designed, I wouldn't have bought. You have to, yeah. as a designer, yeah. you have to put yourself into your customer's shoes. And address their problems, not your own problems. But yeah. if you address your problems, you'll make it for one person. Yeah, yeah, you'll be yeah. Selling, Which is you. You're spending <laughs> space marines for £200 million to one person again. Yeah. You can't do that. You've got to yeah. hit that broad end of the hobby trumpet, which is not me. I'm down here painting um, crimson fists with resin shoulder pads. It's, it's not Beautiful. Like, but, but yeah, that's the <laughs> They're slightly smaller than the slightly space marines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which you new, had new. with um, <laughs> flesh terrors. Just ever so slightly smaller than space marine. Oh pads. yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the wash, got shrunk. I I ended up just buying some three D printed versions instead. Nice. Uh, that I'll put on. You can't use yeah. those in the Games Workshop official tournament, so I'm just. I, I, d- I don't think I'm ever going to do one, so it's fine. <laughs> be a worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll use a different army. I'll use my custodies instead. Yeah, that's good. No, I can't use that. So I, yeah. So mm. and also, so we'd have to then cover it in skulls. And, yes. And, yeah. and then charge more than everyone else, and you yeah. can just buy one from. 
Wilco's anyway. And yeah. Some stuff in it. Yeah. It's like it wasn't. It just wasn't. We we couldn't see a way of making. Of course, we look absolutely looked to wet pallets. Mm. We just couldn't see if we making enough money from it. Yeah. Or you leveraging that commercial advantage that to make it worthwhile. Yeah. And all, and also yeah. We just didn't use them at that yeah, point. That's, most people didn't. One of, right. It's one of the most simple explanations. We just didn't use them. Yeah. Did, did they not use them because they didn't know they existed? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and also there's a bit of everyone in the studio, and this is a bit of a problem with Games Workshop, was at the time, is it's a, it can be, could be, a very insular looking mm. company. You were mm. really much very hard not to look at how other people were painting. Yeah. Most people actually on their internet was locked down. Yeah. So you had a proxy server. Most people were very restricted in what websites you could go to. So it was BBC or... Oh, yeah, you couldn't look right. at YouTube. Could couldn't, you? couldn't yeah. go to, most people couldn't go to YouTube, couldn't go on forums. They, they were locked off. Yeah. Oh, um, right. I had a full proxy bypass because I was a product designer, so I could go off and oh, okay, yeah. be free and yeah. look at the world and yeah. all this sort of stuff because I had to because I had to do patent searches for for all sorts of stuff just to oh. make sure we weren't infringing. Mm. Um, but most because it was and so it was quite interesting. You, look, you looked yeah. at what you did. Most people painted heavy metal style, yeah, or tried to because that's what you were surrounded by. Yeah, that's by. what you see on the box. Generally, yeah. not the best idea for most people. Yeah, as most heavy metal painters would tell you, it's it's designed it's designed to look good on a box. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah, yeah. it's a very yeah. weird style. Well, and I suppose the other thing that leans into the the paint palette thing is because a lot of the, the use of wet palettes is, is the fact that it allows you to keep a blend that you've designed of your own fresh, so you don't <clears> have to try and remember exactly what it was. But if you're painting the stage-by-stage stage way that Games Workshop sort of tries to encourage. Yep. It doesn't require the blend, so yeah. just working off a dry palette of going, that paint followed by that paint followed by that paint. That yeah. Yeah. So the, the wet palette wasn't always a, th- wasn't a thing that massively yeah. needed to be pushed anyway because it didn't match the, the GW painting yeah, and, and standard style, really. If you've got a million and one different painting techniques, it's very confusing to people. If you give people choice, they get they get really been mm. used. You go, you go to a restaurant and there's 400 things on the menu. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what to order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go into a restaurant and it says burger. Oh, the burger, sorted, yeah, right, yeah. brilliant. I don't have yeah. to do anything. Yeah. Um, and it's a bit like that. We felt like it's a bit like that with painting as well because we're looking at the big end of the hobby trumpet. Yeah. These people down here, they'll do what they want. Mm. They'll work, they'll, they'll, they have full freedom to do what they want with our stuff. It's just a tool. Yeah. yeah. We're not worried about them. What we're worried about is getting these people at this broad end to a decent standard. And if we give them 15 different techniques to choose from, they'll just get confused. So that's why we went down the, the one technique. You know, I was in. I was one of the two people in the room when we designed the, the current Citadel color range. Oh, interesting. Um, which was all based off we got Project Yellow, wasn't Project it? Project Yellow. Yeah, Project Yellow. We got a copy of the catalog. There had been a push to sell more paint, and again, the push to sell more paint. Why we're selling less paint? Why we're selling less paint? We're selling less toy soldiers. Fine. Yeah. But how do we sell more paint? We make more colors. So yeah. the first idea was literally just to have loads of colors. Yeah. And that got rejected because we didn't have enough of a plan. So we're like, okay, we need a plan. So we got the Citadel catalogue and we went into a Temple of Old. Remember the little tiny little meeting room? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about it's smaller than this. Oh. Um, Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we went, okay, what are we going to do? And we went through the Citadel catalogue and we're like, we need, a, we need a paint that's not a blend or a recipe or an absolute lie because it's Vallejo purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half the time with heavy metal. Um, <laughs> we, need a, we need a paint so... Anybody can paint any of these miniatures with with a non blended, non mixed paint, mm. Mm. and that's where we, and, that, and that's where we came from. So we started, off, and we just done foundation, yeah, and the first rains of um, forget, forget whether they were shades or whatever they were. Called, yeah, I think they were just washes or shades. Or washes, yeah, might yeah. Be called, what? yeah and we, and it, that worked quite well. But we wanted to build on that, and then we're like, but we formulated the foundation paints, which were a bit chalky. Yeah, we needed to work on those, but when we formulated those, they were formulated as base paints. Yeah, and when we did the washes, we. They stopped being inks and they were actually washes mm. and they behaved in a different manner. Because the, the original inks were just inks. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've done those two ranges as specific formula- chemical formulations to achieve a certain result. Like, well, let's, let's do that even more. So let's do base shade, layer one, layer two. Mm. And that was the plan effectively for every single range in pretty much all the colorways for every single Citadel miniature. We, we went and had this thing about 18 foot long and we went around <laughs> the whole that, room yeah. Yeah. and we put, wrote and we wrote each army on it yeah with all the army entries that yeah were different and we've got post-its and we started working out what paints we needed oh wow and that's how we did it i oh, mean wow. if we look back now as like when we were doing like the um how to paint guides because we had books that came out at the same time as codexes yeah what me and steve worked on a lot uh, another guy and um when we did blood angels then for that guide with the mephiston red whatever shade i think we ended up using agrax because we liked it more because it had a bit more depth and it was like layer up with or highlight with <clears throat> evil sun's highlight with wild rider red 
that was then the consistent way of painting Blood Angels for the Iron Painting team from then onwards. So yeah. if you added like Primaris units later on when they came out on top of the Firstborn, they'd fit in identically. And yeah. they did. So, yeah. and, we, um, and we 100% made some mistakes with some of those colours. I think the bases yeah. were all a bit too dark. Dark, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always missed not having like a towel on flesh from the foundation yeah. as a flesh colour. I thought within about a few months, we thought we should we should put in some lighter lighter bases. Mm. But, we, but, you know, you, you do these things, you make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And also we were, we were attempting to make, which probably was a mistake, to make heavy metal paint that style a bit more accessible to people. Mm. Yeah. Um, by giving them the tools to do so. But in, in, in general, that was the biggest product biggest product launch games workshop had done i think they've only yeah. just literally only just beaten it with the yeah. 40k release yeah, yeah. And, um, that, and again wow. that's been emulated like you look at Dun- duncan's paints and he has like three of you know three reds so you can go yeah, yeah. base coat highlight highlight again yeah. and yeah. all that sort of stuff and we changed yeah. the formulation of the layers are different they have different coverage, different opacity, different pigmentation. Yeah. So they all so they sit on they're slightly they sit on top yeah. of each other. So they're not they're not all the same. Yeah. Each paint is different. Um, now whether or not that's a good thing is up to painters. But again, yeah. It, what we needed was a system to teach people to use to get consistent achievable results that they yeah. felt good about. Yeah. It goes back to that conversation we had about contrast, and that was we did that. Yeah. And it was a lot. That was a lot of work again. And then I remember Peachy coming in. Can I have more of T three seven two? Oh yeah. At one point you knew all the code. They all had yeah. thought yeah. their name. They all had code numbers. The code numbers. Yeah. Peachy knew all the code numbers. In fact, we all knew all the code numbers. It was all ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Because what got harder was when they moved to names. When the, there were codes for so long, then they moved to names. We had to then relearn. The names in coinciding Ooh. with the codes. Okay, so then who was responsible for coming up with the names of the paints? Was, uh, my boss. Yeah. yeah. So one person. Uh, largely, we all had a go. Yeah. Uh, but he largely did all the names. Yeah. Sat, they sat there for about a month with every single book. I need a confirmation. Yeah. Um, I've heard this and I, and I remember talking to other people about it. The space between shade, there wasn't on some of the shades, like Drakenhof Night, Space... Shade, because because you had on to, the label, yeah, because um, you'd have like names of colours like Old of Guard, blue, yeah, Calgar, space blue, and mm-hmm. then you had like shades <clears> like Reichen Flesh, but there wasn't a space. It was Flesh yeah. Shade is one word, right? Well, it's Flesh Shade is one word, but that then, then been, they end up having a shade next to it. But some been. didn't have shade next yeah. to it because it was meant to be like a word then shade, yeah. a word then shade. But even I can what that would have been editorial. Yeah, so mm. what, so Drakenhof Night should be called Drakenhof Nightshade should be Drakenhof Night. Space, it's a shade. That sounds rubbish, yeah. though. Yeah. Dragon of Nightshade sounds much comes yeah. off the tongue a lot better. Yeah, yeah but Dragon of Night is, is the vampires. I know, but. <laughs> yeah. It sounds, doesn't sound good. But Dra- I'm like, Dragon of Night shade, shade, please. Plant different, get that. Nightshade, <laughs> yeah. get that. Get probably that. Probably probably flesh never, shade, not so. It was either editorial so or we just didn't realise. And was, everyone was, just, was so overwhelmed. I think I did after labels. So I probably got so overwhelmed. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. I yeah. just got so stressed out when we were like, doing the paint guides. And it was, um, what's F001 now? Oh, that's Avalanche Sunset. Oh, so that must mean F0, uh, L002, because that's layer L002 will be Euro. Yeah, yeah. So that means L003 will be uh, Flash Gets Yellow. But sometimes cool. not, because some of the paints were used on different ranges. <laughs> so, it might, so the yellow might have first been done for a fire dragon. Yeah, yeah. And then it was brought across the same paint was then brought across and used on a different range so some of them were quite oh. sensible like the ultramarine's armor set were quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. but some of them yeah. jumped around a lot because it was first created yeah in alphabetical order going through the citadel catalog <laughs> ah <laughs> makes sense so that's what yeah. That, yeah so it's funny how some of these decisions roll down the years yeah 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 just as an aside do you know why games workshop boxes are the size are the size they are is it to ups or raw mail packaging so originally, when they opened the stores, they needed a cheap source of shelving, and they bought it from HMV. Oh, oh, because oh, right. Wow. So that's why Games Workshop bays are nine hundred mil across, and that has affected every single box. So that decision <laughs> made in nineteen eighty, whenever it was, to do a shop fit out has affected absolutely everything in Games Workshop. I did not for, know that forevermore. Shop fit out, carton size, box sizes, pa- palette. That's that. That's where it came from. That's amazing. <laughs> so it's so so interesting. How these little decisions roll down the years, and once you make a decision, yeah, it's very hard to change it. Yes, later on, yeah, because you're kind of so a lightsaber just stuck in, in my pocket, <laughs> stuck in that in that way. Yeah, so like everything is yeah designed, I guess, because because I mean I rarely buy hobby uh, products in a physical shop. I might go to Element Games, but 
for space they just have everything stacked on top of each other whereas yeah, games they, workshop you, yeah. you go in and you see the face of everything and it all fits on the shelves very nicely so that's yeah mm. i guess makes complete sense why it's all designed like also that. impact that impacts trade accounts because the boxes are really well they certainly were at one point really designed for retail yeah but that's 40 percent of the business and you're not designing boxes for we kicked off about this because mm. we were designing products and we went into trade shops to see what other people were selling because we were the ones competing with other yeah. With other manufacturers. Yeah, so we would yeah. go and see what other people are doing. And you'd see Games Workshop boxes, and they'd be like, they were R, they are an element when they're side, they're side on. Yeah. And they look rubbish compared yeah. to other people's boxes because yes. they've designed their boxes to yeah. go side on. Yeah. yeah. Whereas ours just had a little man on it. And yeah. you're like, this is really. Is terrible. it all sideways you're doing that? Aren't yeah. You? Yeah. 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 Or, or it's like, oh, it's half a dreadnought or something. It's yes. rubbish. GW yeah. from the side looks crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Watch Name leans into that really well of side ons were uh, Infinity. They'd have a really nice manga mm. yeah. image on the sides of yeah. the box. Legion and, do the same. They've got yeah, some yeah. nice uh, imagery on the side. They don't have a they don't have a large retail presence, so yeah. their emphasis is on trade. Yeah. yeah. Games Workshops was it's got better. We shouted a lot about this, um, and we ended up taking some senior managers into. They went on a little. Uh, I was going to say outside into the car park and shot them. <laughs> shot them. <laughs> <laughs> Round the back of the beans. They went on a. They went on a. They went on a, they went on a quick tour of the biggest local independents. Yeah. And they were like, "Our product looks rubbish." Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. It's really dark and it's really grim and it looks kind of moody and cool. Yeah. But actually it's really dull. Yeah, and that's yeah. when they went back to so they went from the kind of single miniature on a really yeah metallic background. So say like the orcs up there that I do have facing sideways, you can see a squig. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And now yeah. they've gone a bit more colourful. Much more colourful. And each in each range is much more identifiable and it's a lot yeah. easier to navigate. Yes. I think that was one of our kind of not. We didn't cause that, but we sent a post. We're like, this yeah, is not it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, it's visually pleasing um, as opposed to like off-putting. <laughs> but it's a fun. It's a funny game, you know, designing stuff in that in that kind yeah. of. Yeah, it's a funny game, and in fact, in in that environment, it's funny. Like Clippers is is. A, I've bought some Clippers in, and Patrick's given me some of his to show you some of the stuff. And I bit. I think I went through. I went through three or four different iterations of Clippers when I was des- when I was a designer. So this is the first one. Some people may remember these from. I love those. The days of yours. Yeah. I really like these. Um, this is before there was a hobby products team. Yeah. So this was basically done by buying seven quid in retail. <laughs> I remember them. Seven. Um, these Not were, bad. These were, these were there was because Games Workshop has a separate buying department it's called Supplier Development. They've probably changed name by now. Mm. Yeah. Um, and they do a lot of work, like negotiations and contracts and flying off to China and all sorts is of. Is that crazy like things. what Bob Sergi was in and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. um, he was always on the phone shouting to people. <laughs> Used to love that. <laughs> Um, so these were these were a company called Chesto, and but Chesto were effectively an English broker for uh, Chinese factories. So the only so you went to there, and also you could you could buy these anywhere. You all remember this from retail. Hmm. Is you, they bought them from us for seven pounds. They could go to Hobbycraft and get them for four quid, hmm. and it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, from the same place, Chesto, but with a different backing card for like half the price. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's a really hard argument to have with people. Yeah, um, and it's the same with tape measures. Yeah, it's the same. We were selling a tape measure with a sticker on, and they could buy it in Hobbycraft for 99p. We were trying to sell it for £3.50. used to get that in retail yeah. a lot. Like the dads would come in and just go, I can get that from Alphas. So it's like, do. Just do. Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It means you can buy more toys for your kids. I've got some, I've yeah. got some, I've got some side cutters already. Great. Yeah. Use them. Yeah. <laughs> do go for the it. same job. So, and actually, these, these are quite nice, but, um, and they're quite cheap. And you can still get these anywhere you want. But yeah, these were bought in entirely. And all we could do was change, they came in a blister pack. All we could do was change the, the, the backing card. Yeah. That was the only involvement we had. And we bought them out of a catalog. I remember going to visit them a couple of times. Yeah. And going through their showroom and just going, oh, that looks fun. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. yeah. And, and, that, and that's really the only involvement. That was pre hobby team. Yeah. Um, then I got involved part time. And my first, one of my first projects was these. Mm. Um, and this was a different thing where we managed to arrange, we could have our own handle put on someone else's metal, but we had effectively to use someone else's metal bit yeah. or an existing forging. These are forged and then ground. And these originally are. More traditional side cutters, they're bowed yeah. like that, just like you'd see, in a, and then we, they're ground down on a, on, a, on a grind wheel to get them to the yeah. shape. But we were allowed, we not allowed, we negotiated that we could put yeah. our own handles on, which meant that we could add value to these by making them much more Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got a Games Workshop, like they got a Citadel logo on. These were styled after um, Eldar Power Weapons. Uh, oh, so there was a bit yeah. of a... yeah. You're going to hate me. I, I used to call those clippers Blister Central <laughs> because of where the mould line down in the middle. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was doing lots of clipping and stuff like that, I'd get so many blisters. Down Probably because I've got soft lady hands, I don't know. I know, because there's a mould line right down here. Yeah. And also, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not defensive about any stuff we did because we made mistakes. And we probably never tested these. We just did it. Yeah. Because the resource we had at the time was half of my time and one manager. 
and that was it and the binder and that, and that was the sum total of the hobby products team yeah when we did these um, See, and, and there was a range of tools with these but this meant we could kind of start charging the money we wanted to charge because they were different in some way to yeah. every, everybody else's yeah. cutters and most people were using these mm. so yeah suddenly had something different and these went on for a while and of course yeah. peachy load of blisters which is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 see I, I have calloused hands why, why I, have, you, I have soft hands did yeah. you use a mold eye scraping tool and just take it off because that wasn't developed at the time. <laughs> is, the, is the correct answer. <laughs> um, no, my wife's a lot tougher than me, so she, when she used, used the clippers and like stuff like that, she's just like, oh, go and do some hard work, Peachy. I'll be like, all right then. We had these for ages, and then Tom Kirby... I, I do like the little Citadel. Yeah, and Tom like Kirby it. said, um, who was the chairman at yeah. the time, said, um, and this is right when we were not selling very many things, Everything needs to be more. Everything needs to be uh, premium quality, which was towed for charged loads of money for it. Yeah, and it should be metal. So part of the reason people go, why did you make it? Was because we were told that they really had to be metal. Mm. Yeah, and he, and, he, and he wanted them all metal. And also, again, we wanted to make them com- completely and utterly ours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I, all, I've always liked the look of yeah. of those yeah. ones and the feel as well. And I when don't they, own them, but I always thought they looked cool. And then when they released the new versions, I was like, oh, they don't look as good. Uh, yeah. But these are expensive. I mean, they're screwed together. They've got yeah, alum- yeah. Al- anodized aluminium plates on them. The stainless steel. I had to go to China. A couple of projects went to China for, but I went to China for the- on this one. Just to talk to the people making these tips, they wouldn't believe why we wanted them so fine. Yeah, um, and why we were- and what the gr- what the grind what we were grinding the angle for. So we had to go over and talk to them, which is really difficult because. Like most p- professional people who make stuff, they don't want to admit that they can't do it or they don't want to admit, say no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's just, sometimes you've got to find out why they can't do it. And then yeah. you can make a tiny change. They say, oh, I think with these, it was like one or two degree angle. Oh. And they just couldn't get in. But they wouldn't tell you that they couldn't do it. Yeah. It just kept coming back wrong. And once, said, once we found out finally on the shop floor, we had to go down like four layers of finally got our translator could finally talk to someone who actually was on the shop floor. They, were like, oh, they just can't get it on. Well, like, fine. Yeah, but when we're asking for something and you're sending it back and it's wrong, we're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we're like getting oh, we're getting frustrated. Right. Yeah, yeah. But if you tell us that that's the angle we can get to, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll test them. Okay, great, not a problem. We might yeah. we, we might negotiate. We might renegotiate the cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you're not giving us what we want. Yeah, but that's fine. Um, and then these are interesting because these were these are different. So these are flat back. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. terms of these have a flush cut, and these aren't. These are bypass shears. So and they, and this, this that's deliberate. Some people think this isn't. This is like the the, the tips don't match properly. Mm. This is deliberate. You cut with these, and you'll know this. If you cut really close to the model, it can pull a little divot of material out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You cut close to the model with these, it doesn't. It leaves a little bit, which mm. you then have to come yes. and trim up later. You file off. Yeah. Some people prefer that. Yeah. Some people prefer that. Yeah. Oh. And these and because parts were getting so tiny, you could do it with these. We're cutting like aerials or. Yeah. Tiny little gun barrels with these, and as you do it, it just yeah, it would take. So we, so the, but this comes from a patent which expired. Oh. So there's, I forget the name of them, the big big clipper manufacturer, oh, like Godhand or something. No, sorry, it's an American American company, um, and they're like patent protected. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go and have a look. Expired four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem with it, there's an issue with these is that the um, Dimensioning, they need to be very accurate mm. to work really well. But these are these are really when they're new, and I think actually they they changed spec at one point. I can't, I can't confirm it, but I suspect they did. And um, they weren't quite as good afterwards. But when they, when these are new, these are brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And one thing they don't do is fire your little head, model head across the room. No, because yeah. it it, it yeah. cut because it, it the blades cut like this rather than doing this. I think yeah. they've gone back to flush. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not on using the new one. Yeah. I've still got like two, two three pairs of those at home. I really like these, um, and you can get loads of leverage on them. Yeah, they're a bit wide, I think. For, for small hands, but you can get quite a lot of leverage which, you know, for a long time. But yeah, so this this was entirely us. Every single bit of this was us. These were the handles, and then we this was a existing forging that we had ground down. Yeah, yeah. And this was entirely out of the catalogue. Yeah. And that's yeah. almost how the hobby team product product team developed. Yeah. We went from using someone else's products to adapting products to entirely creating our own. So when we did these, it was uh, I wasn't there, but with the first time we did it, it was me and the manager. Yeah. When I did these, it was myself, a design engineer, and the manager. When we did these, we had three designers, the manager, a scheduler, 
Dave was also in charge of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember seeing those on the screen when people like canning <laughs> them and stuff like that. It's um, amazing. Yeah. These were styled by a really talented designer. Yeah. Um, really, really good. And the team progressed. And after that, we brought on the team, got even bigger after that. Mm. We, we then started doing all the scenery as well. So we got Dave yes, Andrews, yeah, yeah, Dave yeah. and Ray. Yeah. Spent a lot of time, Dave, a lot of time for Dave Andrews. Yeah. Amazing guy. Um, Love the Dave. We are like the we sidetracked, but also like the Dave Andrews Appreciation yeah, Society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he often watches the show. So <laughs> hi, hi, Dave. <laughs> Dave taught me a lot, and Dave was very influential and stuff like the contrast paints because he was very keen on going back to that question. Very keen on getting models on the tabletop. Yeah, faces and bases make aces. Yeah, yeah. Get to the twiddly bits. Is yeah. the way I see it. Yeah. Get through the paint. Get to the bit you enjoy. Yeah. For me, that was always yeah. the the gems and the eyes and the twiddly, yeah. and the twiddly yeah. bits and. I love the term the twiddly bits. Twiddly bits. But yeah. that's, 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 we that, all know what you mean. That was my point. <laughs> get to the twiddly bits as fast as possible whilst, whilst retaining neat. Yeah, yeah. And I think we talked we talked about a couple of different philosophies. One of the philosophies we also had was um, 90% of the effect for 10% of the effort. Yeah. Mm. Contrast paint is a case in point in that. Yeah. A lot of the basing paints were the same. We used to take over them before we did the basing paints. I'm not sure we were, probably weren't the first people to do basing paints. But, you know, when you were gluing flock and sand on and then, and then painting it and then washing it and then dry brushing it, and we just put it on, on out of the pot. Yeah. I've heard rumours that they're changing their, like, basing materials and stuff. I don't know. I mean, I the, the, know. the thing that gets me is when they make changes and it doesn't tie with a previous colour scheme. So the new grasses are very different to the previous grasses. Oh, right, that, yeah. And I, I'd call them the... the the Blood Raven and the Demonette <laughs> grasses, because one had a picture of a Blood Raven on it and one had a picture of a Demon on it. Sometimes at a glance they looked the similar tone of green, but they were very different. One was very light. They changed was... all the time because of the supplier. Yeah, but um. the one with the Blood Raven on was the most consistent, I'd find, and I'd, I'd have those, and I'd use that all the time for my basing. So for my Venturini Noble Sister Battle, my um, Halligild Army, or my Citizen Sigma stuff, it's all the same basing. And mm. then they stopped that and they brought out the new ones. Nothing's like it at all. So I, I'm like... <laughs> It doesn't look, even look the same, so I have to go to like army painter now and get yes, which is I'm fine with because I I don't really care anymore yeah because uh, I'm not tied down to to a business. But anyone that's a, in the business still that has old ways of basing can't yeah. do that. Really and this is one of the things about change of, for a large business changing direction is really difficult because people have existing armies mm. yeah and they have existing ways of basing yeah and suddenly you're asking them to change. It's why you know when we when we did do Project Yellow the main Citadel colours yeah there was huge wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yes, because suddenly people couldn't. But you tried to make tones the same as like we did some of the best, but yeah, we we're also we're a lot of it was we were changing paint manufacturer. Yeah, so yes, was, yeah. So we're going from I think it was Colour at the time to um, HMG in Manchester. So we're completely changing the paint mm. manufacturer. Um, so we had to change everything. I kind of had to change anything anyway. Mm. We'd had a good cost saving, and HMG being in Manchester, we're so close we could drive over and see them. Yeah. Whereas Colour were in France or China, so it was much, much more difficult. Yeah. Oh right. And we had to be super and you got to, and the matching paints is really tough. Yeah. So we had we had draw down procedures in and stuff in draw down cards. So you get a black you get a card which has a, a load of black printed on it, a load of white printed on it, and some kind of half tones and bits and bobs. And you put down a load of paint and you draw a bar down it. And the bar set with a certain micron thickness. So you always pull down, there's always a coating of paint, which is always the same. And then you can then compare that directly with a master card under a certain light, and you can check whether they're the same. And God, we had to train so every batch. We've well, got to do it. Yeah. Every batch had to be colour checked. When it came into the factory, we had to colour checked against um, the master cards. We had several sets of master cards, some of which were like in a deep dark safe, never to be touched. Mm. Some of which we had in our office. Then they had the office in the factory, which always got left on the desk, and we we're like screaming at them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. Um, but you can't, if someone's painted half their army in one colour and suddenly they pick up another, every single pot and paint has to be the same. Yeah. Mm. Has to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that and sense. that costs money as well because that's really, because then you've got 100% batch check everything. Mm. And bear in mind, all the bottling and la bottling, labelling, and lidding is done in house, and all of the bottles and lids and labels are made in house as well. The labels are bought in, but the lids and bottles are made in house. And yeah. the filling's done in-house. So it's all done in-house. Um, it's very complicated. It's taken, it took a long time to get right. Yeah. Like the, the, the lid tool is like a 30, 32 impression. So it's got 32 separate cavities to make the lids. It's, it's amazing. It weighs like four tons. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the bottles. 
you know, we could talk, talk for ages about bottles, but before we move on to... Well, <laughs> well <laughs> so, I mean, this was something that our patrons have asked um, quite a bit, and, and, and there's the general consensus yeah. around the hobby that people say, drop a bottle's good, Citadel pot's bad. Yeah. Um, why Citadel pot's bad or good? So why drop a bottles are good for whom? Oh, oh, yeah. I'd say airbrushes. Yeah, they're good for airbrushes. I waste so much yeah. drop a bottles these okay. days. So... We so one one simple reason we didn't use dropper bottles we didn't use yeah uh, we didn't like them. People always have to modify their dropper bottles, or they put ball bearings in, mm. or they have a yeah. I was talking to Jeff. Jeff, thanks, okay. Jeff. Sorry, oh, I was going to say Pat. So thank you. I was talking to Jeff before we started talking. He's got his That's de- a good look. On he's got his dedicated um, half half a paper clip. half a paper clip stick that he has ready to yeah. stir his paint. You can't just yeah. you can't just shake it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going back to the hobby cane. So you need a paint yeah. that's mixable easily by little little Jane or little Johnny mm. right beginning of this hobby trumpet. Yeah. Um, and we needed a bottle as well that was they wanted a bottle that was theirs. Yeah. It was yeah. Games Workshop, hundred yeah. percent Games Workshop's bottle. It wasn't yeah. wasn't anyone else's bottle. Yeah. No, their, nobody else. Bottle. Nobody else copies and it at all. Do and they, we're going so. back to that universal yeah. thing as well. Um, so it's, it was. And I'm not saying it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because it took a lot of work. Because yeah. getting a seal right is incredibly hard, oh. and screw caps are terrible mm. in yeah. general. They just yeah. get they get bunged up. Um, flip tops are really difficult to get the seal right. You spend a lot of time getting a harder bottle and a softer lid. Yeah, to make sure that one one kind of grips over the top. Yeah, of the like one. forms over. And it. about, there was about three or four different variations of that seal to make yeah. it work. Um, so I think the main re- t- two reasons yeah, that was the reason it needs to, it needs to be usable by someone that wasn't a skilled user. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of these decisions go back to it needs to be usable by someone that isn't a skilled user. You could you need a bit of nouse about you to use a dropper bottle properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I think if, there's nothing wrong with a dropper bottle, yeah, yeah. but you need to know what you're doing with it because yeah. if you don't mix it, you just squeeze a load of medium out. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah, we we get that occasionally with yeah, some paints. Thought if I'd we give it a good shake, yeah. and even then after a good shake, still the, just not, still getting the, some medium out. The army painter new speed paint ones. Um, if you if you turn them because they they put. They put ball bearings in the bottles, That's good. Um, which is good. But then the downside of that is you if you if you pour them out vertically, um, you create a seal in the bottle, and then the cap explodes yeah. if you squeeze it too hard, oh, which with. which we've had. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then I don't, there was some comments on on like one of the videos. Um, well, our our review that we did of, of speed paint a while ago. Um, and someone was like, "Well, if you think if you're pouring like you know milk out of a jug, you're not going to do it vertically, are you?" But yeah, um, it's kind of like yeah, no, that's what yeah. happens. But and, and it, when you win a tr- just naturally, it, you you do find yourself. I think if you if you end up blaming the user for something, then it's kind of like yeah, but the difference mm, between anyway. milk as well is like milk has quite a large aperture when you pour it, and out there's no it ball bearing in yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, size the ball bearing to go in a bottle in a pint of milk. And you left it in the freezer, <laughs> yeah. just, and it's like, I might start using uh, milk out of dropper bottles and just see how we get on. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was partly the reason. I think also some of the paints were too uh, weren't viscous enough to go in a dropper bottle. So yeah, some of the washes would just wouldn't seal. Uh, okay. Oh, oh you, you did that, and it was just yeah. yeah. So I think that was one of the reasons as well. And but I think fundamentally, we just wanted our own bottle. Yeah. And then when, at the time, we looked at every everybody's bottle, everybody's bottle, including the old J caps, which was the ones everyone loves. Which the is the black hexagonal ones? Uh, no, the ones before that. The uh, ones, okay. Yeah. Um, which is what's called a J cap lid. Um, they're, they're they're not very good paint bottles, but they seal really yeah. incredibly well. That's why they all still last 30 yeah, years Yeah, because you're like there with your teeth trying to bloody open. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the little tab falls off. <laughs> and then, the, and then it, your the, thumbs it, bleed. It, it UV degrades. Yeah. And all of the, and the lid crumbles as you take it apart. Is that the one that was on the old upright hexagonal bottle? It was the same cap, bottle. yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we, we really wanted our own cap. Our, our own bottle that was distinctive and Games Workshops. And you could see it on a shelf and you'd know it was Games Workshops. And if you put if, yeah. if everyone's using the same, which they do, yeah, then how do you know it's their bottle? How do you want a distinction in a... In, in an environment my, to search your bottle. My biggest bugbear, and it's, I guess it's um, it's not anyone's fault, it's not a designer's fault, but you've got that little stopper at the end. Yeah. But people, th- uh, I've experienced a lot of people thinking that's when you push past, it's clipped open and it keeps it open. I was like, no, because once it goes past there, you can't close it properly nope. now. Yeah. That's like a stopper. Whereas a few people would see it as like, oh, I have to open it until it goes click and it will stay open. I can see that because they want a tactile. Yeah, yeah. They want a tactile yeah. feedback. It does do that job. 
really well of keeping it the bottle does. up, but it's then the <laughs> other way, yeah, going the other way back. <laughs> then you're like, you have to stretch like it, shove it, you have to shoving things it through to get it back yeah. again. Yeah. Um, I don't think we ever got that quite right. Yeah, I think we had we had, a, we had a design intention of getting it to a certain angle, which partly stopped the bottle over, yeah, over tilting, and and it for it to be retained. And I don't think we ever got it the way we really wanted it. Mm. Yeah, because we wanted it, it had to be a, sit at a thirty degree angle. The excess paint would run off the tongue, go back into the bottle, so it wouldn't seal, it wouldn't foul the seals. Yeah. And we just never, it never quite worked out. There's always something not quite right with it. The only one I never really liked was the one that looked like a shell. They were terrible. Because they just, the paint just used to just well, get there's in. No, the, there's no seal on it. There was no seal on oh, it. And the yes, paint just yeah, used to get yeah. in, the, in the, we're getting the groove. And yeah. Like, that's the actually open. If you look at the way the hinge is yeah. on those bottles, there's a, there's a tiny gap all the way into the paint pot. They're not sealed. Because they did them absolutely t- mental. Yeah. They did oh. them where they opened on the top, didn't they? But there was one before that where you just had cap. To, yeah, you yeah. just had a screw cap, and they were awful. And crystals them. slightly porous anyway. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so were, that that material is very slightly. All plastic is very slightly porous, but that was very slightly porous. Yeah, they were more to more so. And you'll see, you, you'd lost a lot of. I've still got one of that. I've still got one of them with uh, chestnut ink in it, which is nice. Ooh, that's pretty worth yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah everyone I've, raves about chestnut <laughs> ink, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. It's yeah. mine and it's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember what the, the, the latest shade or technical paint was that it was to mimic. It's not canoptic, canoptic alloy. It was a it was another necrony kind of name, but that's no longer available now. They've got they've got rid. It's like a gloss. Oh right. It was a, a necron flavoured paint that came out in I mean, I like the bottle, but then I did the visuals on it. Yeah. Well, I mean so I went to your work. <laughs> yeah. I mean they're not gonna change it because might do at some point, but currently there's about you know there's several millions of pounds worth of investment in filling lines, and there's million yeah. and, and massive massively expensive tools and injection blow molding machines mm. to make the bottles and all sorts of stuff. Um, so they probably oh, yeah. highly doubt it's going to change. I think it's better than most. If you like a dropper pot, you're going to like a dropper pot. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah because yeah, you work yeah. in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And for a lot, I think for more experienced painters, dropper pots are probably a better solution. Yeah, but I think for people, bear at, the, mind, at the end of the trumpet, at the, end, yeah. the, the wide end of the yeah. trumpet, I, yeah. think, I think that bottle is probably that's a better, better solution. Such an interesting thing to to bear in mind because it's easy to get, like you say, stuck in your own ways and like how you do stuff. That when you're a big business and a design studio that's designing things for entry level, it's easy to forget that everything you do is to get people in the hobby, not yeah to worry about yeah. that one person that's really interested in that one unique main you know off the cuff kind of like yeah way of painting a particular model or whatever Absolutely. there's so, other bits yeah. of business that deal with that and there's other companies that make their products and also people yeah. adapt as just as we said earlier people will adapt your product to use it the way the way they want to use it mm. you know that's just that's just life so before we went live uh or recording you had a question about Corax White. Was it from yourself or was it from a patron? Oh, that was a patron question. Oh, we'll come yeah, to that yeah, later. yeah. We'll come to that later. Yeah. I just thought because we're on the t- t- we, paint. Yeah, we still haven't talked about the uh, spray gun, the flame Spray gun, yes. Yeah. The fl- I love this. I love the flame of spray gun. I used to use it all the time. It's so, the air gun, not airbrush. So I've only heard about this from like memes about how everyone hates it. I never hated it. I, never hated it. I used it all the probably, time. They're probably using it. I, I had well, one good one. Uh, <laughs> fair, there was a couple that were a bit dodgy. I had one good one. I thought it was GW's answer to the airbrush. That that was like my impression. That, that, so, that was the internet saying that. That was yeah. It was always yeah. marketed by Games, Games Workshop's marketing at the time. It was very clear. I think, I, okay, it may not have been clear enough, but I thought it was clear enough that it was basically intended for base coating. Yeah. The, the, it was for you to base coat a whole miniature yeah. in a colour of your choosing from mm-hmm. the range. And that was what it was for. And it was called a spray gun. And we very deliberately called it a spray gun. Yeah. And not an airbrush. Because it was absolutely not. Because it's a post mix. The paint comes in after the after the, it's an aerosol type. So it, yeah. So it's not it doesn't use it's not an airbrush. Um and what we really wanted to do was a much bigger range of rattle cans. Mm. But we couldn't do, we weren't allowed to do more rattle cans. We wanted to do twenty rattle cans. Yeah, because isn't there a rule of like twelve on something the, like that. Some some weird yeah. rule of twelve on the shop. Um which I don't but, understand what. But we couldn't do enough I think to do with um, sell by dates and stuff going out of time and and there's a lot of that you talked about earlier about why do you only have so many things because um, warehousing space is expensive yeah and if you keep everything in the warehouse all of the time yeah, yeah. it's extremely expensive yeah and then you have to make increasingly small um, turn injection machine cycling injection molding machine is expensive you've got to shut it down get all the plastic out change the moulds get it running again get the timing right get the shot quantities right yeah. to make 100 not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're ever gonna do oh, big right. quantities. Yeah, yeah. Again, guess that are we gonna make a hundred thousand pounds out of this change? Yes. Or are we not? 
Yeah. Because if someone, someone, we can have someone moaning, but we're only going to make a thousand quid. So and it's going to cost us, it's going to lose us the opportunity to make a hundred thousand. Yeah. Mm. So like Colour Forge, for example, they, they match their colours to Citadel uh, base coats, I yeah, think. Yeah, so yeah. you can buy an Avalanche Sunset spray and all that sort of stuff. And that, that's really fascinating because I, w- originally when I saw the Colour Forge stuff, I was like, oh, GW is going to be annoyed. But like, it's like they, GW, yeah, it, everything you're saying like completely makes they sense. Won't. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they use the names, they get, you can't really pay, yeah. you can't trademark a colour. No. You can trademark a name. That's why they've all got stupid names. Yeah. 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 That's why all the paints have really weird names because you can then because you can trademark that. It's po- it's also post chapter house. Yes, yeah, yeah. You have everything yeah. has to have a distinctive IP. They've yeah. got to be an IP bit of IP name and then a colour. Yeah. Yeah. And so everything has to have something you can trademark. You can't copyright vomit brown, snot green. No, you can't. And scab red. Blood red. Yeah. <laughs> Goblin green you can't copyright. Yeah. You can copyright whatever it is now. Yeah. But and so that the was fist red. <laughs> so that was very much a right, and that's how you do it. But you can't copyright the shade. No. And actually, so that's going to sound really harsh. They're not making money. Well, they're making money, but they're not making yes a million pounds. Yeah. They're making good money, I'm sure. It's yeah. keeping someone in a yeah. house and a mortgage, and that's yeah. great. It's not making a million, yeah. two million, it's five million quid, which different, is Games Workshop territory. Different, different order. scales, yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of this stuff we used to see as support for us anyway. Yes. Because we're not making We can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's great. They can make it. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. We, we never got upset by stuff like that. Mm. Unless someone was really being directly directly copying but that yeah, very yeah. rarely happens yeah i always think that's an interesting thing isn't it? this thing of like uh i think sometimes it's easy to forget that if somebody's making something that you might not hugely like the fact that they make a lot of the time they're still going to have to buy your tank to put it on anyway yeah and that's you know why do they want avalan sunset spray or i and in yeah. yellow spray yeah probably the spraying eldari or imperial fist that's what they're doing right yeah yeah um and another one of our, I'm going to keep popping these kind of central philosophies in, oh, cool. um, was it's all about a toy soldier. Mm. Everything we, we did was to sell more toy soldiers. Yeah. Because that is the heart, the soul of the of Games yes. Workshop surviving as a company. And they are, yeah, a manufacturing company and they're going to make toy well, soldiers. Well, you back, and, you can, and, yeah. can, you, can you reel the, the mission statement? Oh, up? yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you you say it because it's I, I I used to switch off. You, you you've got it fresh in your brain. Oh me, yeah. oh crikey! You, you said it a few times. No, well, well, I mean, I'm like, what's selling the I world's just, best fantasy you, and science and fiction? We yeah, to and forever, we're going to sell yeah. them at a profit and make and, them in Nottingham forever. forever. Yeah. Right, and yeah. so that's the central tenant of the company. Yeah. So as a yeah. as for us, all of this stuff only exists because toy soldiers exist. Yeah, yeah. it's a, right? it's a peripheral, isn't everything it? Everything we should do should be designed to sell more toy soldiers. Yeah, because that's what's going to keep was was going to keep us with roof over head and yeah, paid and yeah. pensions and everything else and you've got to put your ego aside because and also you, so that's why you don't design also why you don't design stuff for yourself you design stuff for the, for the mass market because mm. that's important that's what that's what pays everyone's bills so you've got some other tools and things here i'm, I'm a big fan of the combat gauge and i know <laughs> a few people aren't but it's a really nice quick easy way of measuring stuff but i also feel like i'm in national treasure with um Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I feel like if I just put it up against the sun or something oh, like that. Steal the mountain, declaration. Uh, can... have, have we talked enough about the paint gun yet? Oh, oh no, we've not. Paint gun. To... No, we've not. Because we got sidetracked. Because we got sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> keep, oh, I'm keeping us on track. It's very good. Yeah. Very good. No, so the paint gun. So um, we couldn't do rattle cans. We wanted yeah. to do more rattle cans. We're like, okay. Um, and this almost goes back to how do we get to that cool moment of figure as fast as possible. Mm. So we're not having to like brush the undercoat. And then brush all these things on. It takes time. We want to get to that magic moment. Yeah, oh, I'm caught. I'm happy as fast as possible. So partly that was with, and I think we'd also just been through one of our rounds of we can't do it. We can't do an airbrush because it's too expensive. However, one of them said, "Well, we can. You can. You, we, what we can do for you is you can you can have the metal bits from one of our existing products, and you give us some money, and we'll injection mold something around them of your uh, to your design, and you can have it at this price." And we were like, "Okay, that's interesting." Because now we can get something which is of an equivalent cost ish, mm. and we can do, and we can add some value. Adding value basically means putting skulls on it. Yeah, uh, we can add some value to it. Or flamers. Or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, what we're going to do? And then I had the idea, or someone had the idea of let's make it a hand flamer. So we got the old Necromunda books out and had a look at the hand flamer and cadded up this. Well, I don't think we even cadded. I think I probably did it in Illustrator at the mm. time, and then sent some drawings off to the Chinese uh, manufacturer, and it came back, and we're like. It's too late now. And everyone said, <laughs> you boys are bad. You're bad boys. And we're like, yeah, but it's a hand flavor, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want one of those. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, and it was a really budget. Yeah. It was a really budget spray gun, post-mix spray gun, 
a bit difficult to use, but ultimately, if you wanted to base, base paint an army, you'd do it in seconds. It's brilliant. So yeah. I, I used to use it a lot in the army painting team. Um, and at the time, we were doing War of the Ring, mm-hmm. uh, for Lord of the Rings. So yeah, like that is a, you, you needed lots of orcs and like Rohan and Menegondor. So the Menegondor, I'd use the, because uh, we didn't have silver spray, I'd put silver through and I'd just undercoat the entire lot with silver. The orcs I'd always use, at the time were scorched brown, then we ended up getting like dryer bark and stuff because the new paint's on the way. And I'd put that through and I ended up getting this sort of like, ratio and it was mark jones actually said use screen wash instead of water yeah because i was using water so he said use screen wash i'd use screen wash to thin the paint down but i'd have like a little marking on my bottle i had my own special bottle because you had there's loads of spare bottles but i'd always have my own so for uh, customers uh, customers viewers might be wondering also you know i'm wondering because i remember seeing a picture of it how does it actually work there's paint and then there's a can of something no so you, you've got like a well you, there was a can was a can there was a can but we used to have a uh, compressor we used to hose it to the compressor which did the same thing as the can oh right okay. same fittings yeah yeah but because we couldn't we looked at selling a compressor but we had the same problems with, as with the yeah. edge again yeah. you have to mark it up yeah you may as well just go and buy someone else's and also that's a big expense so your, your spray gun was relatively cheap yeah um the compressor you're talking 100 150 200 yeah. pounds lot, yeah. a lot of money yeah for certainly that time yeah they've yeah. got a bit cheaper oh, a compressor that looked like a space marine's backpack how cool would that have been <laughs> would have been great <laughs> oh <laughs> man would have been great well why didn't we do that that would be so, <laughs> so good should have work. worked on a team um <laughs> definitely giving you a job um so we just couldn't do it so we used the um the screw on cans which are not very good yeah and also they get because of Boyle's law, they get cold. Yeah. So we were doing stuff like you kind of fill a bowl up with warm water and put the yeah. connect it up and put the can in the warm water. Yeah. Lose the pressure. Lose the pressure. Yeah. Or you had to have like several several cans to keep. So it wasn't an ideal solution. Yeah. But it was a solution to a problem. Yeah. Now, I I enjoy it because it looked look at a hand flame. Hand flame is yeah. cool, right? I nearly did. We did look at doing a Citadel paint dryer, which was a hair dryer, but with the plastic casing of a plasma pistol nice oh, nice and we, and we didn't get that didn't get that one oh. <laughs> i'd still have one of them in my barber shop now a few events and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the top and the top lit up with leds would you overcharge though well, it depends how busy on a saturday you probably would <laughs> yeah i'd be really like busy. now do you want your hair dried with a hair dryer or do you want your hair dried for one pound extra with a plasma gun <laughs> <laughs> It was um, weird. He was drying my hair, and then he just blew up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, you overcharge button on it. Yeah. I mean, the thing with the the air gun, though, it was easier to clean out. Uh, so um, we had a departmental uh, badger um, airbrush, um, and it just used. To, I, I was there. I, I remember actually having a load of Rohan. Wanted to get them browned up as quickly as possible, so I could just get all the other colours. Can you say on. that these days? Yeah, because they are carrying all the leather in the horses. Um, and uh, so I was offered to use the airbrush, and I'd used the airbrush a couple of times up to that point, and it was taking ages to get it working. Nothing was coming out. I was cleaning it out, I was getting the nozzle. And I spent about 45 minutes trying to get this airbrush clean. I was like, my air gun's going to do this in seconds. I'll go and grab my air gun, attach it to the compressor, I get my little mix with my little black lines, I'll yeah. put that amount of paint in, and the rest is screen wash. Uh... <laughs> Done. Yeah. Literally two minutes. I did like I think it was like 150 Rohan uh, in like two minutes. Oh wow! And the the airbrush was still not working because uh, the guy who was owned it was like trying to fix it as well and get it clean. And he was oh, like, right. oh, "I've got it working." I was like, "Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> it's done." Yeah. Um, so they're really easy to clean because the only thing would be would be the actual nozzle of your your canister where you keep your paint would get yeah blocked up i don't know how but sometimes you weren't looking after it and then just the bit at the front would just yeah. be clean you could take it off and clean it really easily. yeah yeah just cleaning if someone's left because we had departmental airbrushes all over the place we yeah had, we had several for testing stuff with and some invariably someone wouldn't clean it out properly yeah and then you'd spend yeah you'd spend ages yeah. just sticking stuff in solvent yeah. and swearing it and getting really paranoid that you bent the needle or whatever it's just like yeah and it was just a, it, it was it was a quick basically if people people see it as a rattle can replacement yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, that's and that's all it was. You could you could kind of maybe do like camouflage on an Imperial Guard tank with it, but that that's about the level of detail. Yeah, that you, yeah. That you, that you could get out. Good of for it. scenery. Good for yeah. getting armies painted really quick. I really want one now. <laughs> you really talked it yeah. up. Now. I really I think we'll, have to, we'll have to do a video where we go back and use it. Can, we'll get one on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be able to go to Hobbycraft and buy one. Yeah, but it but it's not like be one. Yeah, that's a problem. And you know, we talked about putting skulls on and adding value. 
That's that, and, and this is it. We that, don't we it. don't want the hobbycraft paint gun. No, we want I am the your flamer gun. Prime, I am your prime market. So <laughs> yeah, impressed. absolutely. They, they the reasons for doing stuff like that. I nearly wet myself yesterday when I was at War. I was at uh, I was Warhammer World. I got to wear a cardboard power fist, and I was so pleased. Oh, I saw someone else. I saw the picture. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, it, what was it? First comes the pegging, then comes the f- fisting. F- fisting. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Is that a new like marketing <laughs> thing to work on? Oh, we got some brushes. Oh, oh red classic. brushes. Red brushes, oh, blue now brushes. We're talking. Oh, yeah. These, oh, are, these are my days of retail, these are. So Can I jump in? Do yeah. Well, do. I've, got, do. I've got a question for Mr. Peach. Yeah. Uh, which were the best brushes, Peach? Was it the red ones, the blue ones, or the black ones? See, I'd, I'd used the red ones a little bit. Are they but <laughs> I, um, I I definitely remember having more fondness with the blue ones. Blue ones, okay. Than the black ones, uh, okay. like at my time in the army painting team, and they were hit and miss sometimes. But I think that's with all cases with all brushes. It can be a bit hit and miss. So the answer is someone's already spoiled it. They're all the same. They're all the same. Oh, They've really? just got a different colour handle, oh. and it's really funny hearing people. And I hear this all the time. We so read this all the time. Oh, the red ones are the best ones, or the blue ones are better than the black <laughs> yeah. ones. And the black ones are better. Guys, guys, it's, it's the same brush <laughs> made by the same little old ladies in Lower Stoft at a company <laughs> called Crown Artist Brush who have been doing that job for, forever. There's only like three or four good brass manufacturers in the world. We need yes. to get some new old ladies there because surely there's only like a certain <laughs> time limit before they um, all expire. And it's really funny yeah. when you see all these new brushes coming out and you're like, I know where they're made, guys. Mm. There's, and they're basically, there's only a few, and most of them, two of them are in this country, three of them are in this country, one's in the States. Mm. And they basically all make all made by the same people. So the brushes, we were talking about the fine detail brush. All, yeah, that, yeah, all that yeah. stuff was the same. The the newer range, which has got some synthetics in, and stuff, it's actually still made by the same people. Yeah, um, it's still made, I actually still made by the same company. Really like the the small layer. I know we get like the artificer, artifice, how you want to pronounce it, brushes. But I always found that they were like not as pointy so, as the small layer brushes. You know what this is, don't you? What, what it That's really... a paintbrush. No, but what? <laughs> so, what Next what, trick question. That, well, that <laughs> time wasn't wasted the duck up, was it? He's good, isn't he? <laughs> he is, yeah. So these are, these are Winsor Newton Series 7. Yes, that's oh, what right. I heard. They, but they, they never felt like they it. They are Winsor Newton Series. Well, they're, yeah. they're not. They're just the artificer brushes. Yeah. Yeah. They come off the same line that Winsor Newton Series 7 come off. I'm probably, they're probably going to shoot me down at Games Workshop now. I don't. I, um, I think I've said the that The amount before. of money I've spent on Winsor Newton Series 7s as well. Well, you might past. as well, because they're cheap in these. Yeah. Because you're not paying that Games Workshop markup. Um but they are. That's that's what they are. And also, that's why heavy metal used all the time. It's really funny because we had this massive range of brushes, and heavy metal would basically use like a triple zero yeah. and a two. Yeah, I used to use a one Done. and a zero. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason you need it, you said this. I see you know you said this on the show before. The only reason you need a, a smaller brush is to get into a tighter area because the point's the same. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, but we, <laughs> I'll finish off this story. So when we did the new range, we deliberately didn't do. A, a, a fine detail equivalent in the existing standard because the fine detail brush was for years the number one selling brush. Yeah. I mean, it almost didn't want people to use it because it takes ages to paint a miniature with a fine detail brush because you can't get the paint in the belly. Yeah. But people, because it was the tiny brush, that must be what heavy metal used. Yeah, yeah, So they yeah. were like painting so art. I'm terrible for that now. <laughs> I've only just recently started, um, I've, we've, I've gotten a, a, a load of um, Artist Opus brushes and I've really gone on a mission lately to start trying to teach myself to to work with the three as yeah. much as I can. Because I'm terrible yeah. for getting Get stuff, stuff in the tiny so brush. Much yeah. I know I'm terrible for it. And then you go to that just to do your like the the, the white dots and your gems and stuff. Yeah. 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 I thought I dropped that one in because yeah, no. I see that one. I see that one pop up. Oh, that's I remember when we did yeah. the blind tests of those as well. When we had the artificer and stuff, that was that was fun. So uh, our boss, my boss at the time, swore blind that no one could tell the difference between a a really high a Kalinsky sable or a sable or a synthetic I think I think we all agreed you could tell the difference between a synthetic and a yeah but yeah there was he swore blind there was no difference between a most people couldn't tell the difference between a Kalinsky sable and a, and a sable the difference being that the Kalinsky sable is made from the very tip of the sable tails yeah I'm amazed it's not been banned yet by the way because it's yeah trading yeah. in animal hair yeah yeah I'm amazed they're still going yeah um that's why most of the manufacturers are pushing really hard to get really good synthetics yeah yes. at some point at some point yeah. that trade's gonna get you know, yeah banned, particularly with the current conflicts going on yeah. yes it's a lot of it's come out of russia from anyway. russia yeah. 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 yeah um but yeah kalinsky is right at the end where it's the straightest that's yeah we call it kalinsky rather than tip of the tail because yeah. that's but there you go um and he swore blind well he was convinced that most people couldn't tell the difference so we did this completely blind test we got like 20 sets of people we got heavy metal painters hobby painters Normal painters, just people around the business, and complete novices. And we got them, we gave them a set of br- three brushes, 
and we gave them three miniatures and we got them to do the same task on every single miniature. And without fail, I think everyone picked the, the Series 7. Yeah. And we also got the supplier to supply us stuff on the same handle because the handle is very slightly different between a Series yes. 77 and a normal yeah, bit yeah. thinner. We got them all to put all the heads on the same handle. So there was no difference other than the brush head. And we got them to do the same task and without fail, everyone from novice to most well, because they have heavy metal knew what they were dealing with because they'd use it as the tool they use in their daily lives. But that they all went for the best for the best brush. Yeah. It was just everyone can, yeah. yeah. Even if you'd never painted before, you can tell. You can tell. There's something about it. Oh, yeah, it's holds so paint cool. better. Yeah. And it spring the spring yeah. is better. But yeah, little aside for Fantastic. Yeah, I, I remember having a lot of fun doing that. Um so so before I said, Hey, we haven't talked about the spray gun, you were getting out a, a national treasure the national uh, treasure tool <laughs> to find the so uh, you can steal the declaration of independence <laughs> aside from kind of the painting stuff gluing stuff assembling stuff we, we also i don't think they do anymore um the team we had the we did all the gaming aids not really bad aids gaming aids yeah yeah, yeah. um the gaming aids for all the releases and actually it was a big source of money we made like millions of quids off off this stuff and we did the collector's edition which always was in a fancy style was a, like a posh Weird opening box yes. with all the yeah, 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 yeah. amazing bits. And we worked <laughs> really hard with suppliers. They used to win loads of printing awards. We never used to talk about it. But the, the collector's edition books used to win printing awards left, right and centre because they were just so crazy. Yeah. Um, and we pushed it really hard. And we did the gaming edition, which was generally a load of stuff in a bag. And then we did the stuff. And then we did, so we did all the fancy templates. Mm. So I did all, we did a lot of the fancy templates for years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and take measures. Go and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then for Age of Sigmar, we were looking at doing um, a measuring tool of some description that wasn't wasn't normal, wasn't our kind of normal thing. And then in, with the rules, there was all this stuff about the weapons having different... So spears yeah, had a different yeah. thing to a sword, and to a dagger, pile in as well. and pylon moves. And actually getting a tape measure... People, we would play to the people, they were playtesting like this. To, yeah, to check the distance, and they were snapping models, and it was all oh, not going very right. well. Yeah. Oh, I'm painting models, by the way. I'm painting models. Heavy metal models getting like ejected, <laughs> things on the um, And this just wasn't the right, and it was at the wrong angle. And games, again, the right games dev were fighting because it was two and a half. Yeah, they're always fighting. They're always guys. fighting those guys. <laughs> so we just came up with this crazy little thing. And also, we weren't allowed to do merch, but that's clearly a keyring, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which had all the pertinent distances on it. Yeah, you put it on the right size uh, broom handle, and the light goes through it. It shows you Games Workshop's offshore That's account. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure you read the other side. Nice indie, yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. indie yeah. reference. I've got to say, yeah. it's my hands on one side. I've got to grab the hot one. Also, <laughs> you find it if you insert that into the little uh, little nozzle, the little hole, it'll open the door as well. Oh. Yeah. It's, the it's also the key to the executive rush, the executive washroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, Did, it's true. Do you think that inspired the kill team gauges? Okay. Yeah, it would have yeah, done, yeah, yeah, would have yeah. done, yeah. yeah. This was the first time, this first time we did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's also came, I think we wanted to do like this multi-tool thing, mm. which had all the, uh, you had this like, it was all connected, and you had all the bits and stuff on mm. it, and all the template, and it wasn't ended up being, not being any templates. Yeah. Um, and this was like the survivor of this long design process. It almost like all the weird ideas boiled down to this slightly weird idea. I'm still not entirely sure why we put it on a necklace. So you can have it around your neck and yeah. then knock all your models when you're bent <laughs> over. <laughs> And then you had to have this EU compliant anti choking device. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I love that. I, I used to, to play with that loads. I had to read regulations. I bet that was fun. <laughs> I was the only person that could tolerate it. So I ended up reading all the patents and EU regulations and mm. everything else. Um, this, yeah, this was one of those crazy. And that came with the big, the big round actual tape measure. Yes, yeah. And then we also did things like people. Some people will remember the servo skull tape measure. Yes, I love the servo skull. <gasps> oh, I never bought that, and I really wanted it at the time. Again, back to the fact I'm so easily led, but I really wanted that servo skull tape measure. It was a £10 tape measure. Oh, no. I don't know, because the, the, <laughs> the age of sick one was 20. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing, though, because it was a servo skull. It was, yeah, it was yeah, exactly yeah. what I And that, that came from when I... Um, I'm going to take this off, because it looked like an idiot. Um, that came from... Um, we were looking to get inspiration for the next range of gaming aids, for uh, whether it was 40k 7th or 40k 8th. Um, and we really wanted to, what we wanted to make sure that you weren't dislocated from the battlefield. This is the same. This is why it's styled in a manner of mm -hmm. Age of Sigma. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I'm googling servo score tape measure. How much did it cost to buy? About ten quid. eBay eighty. What? 
I'd still buy that and have it on a transparent stand on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. just talk to <laughs> yeah. Sorry, AVT2, what? You and think, the, what? Sorry. The, yeah. ch- the cheapest spray gun I could find was £60. Pounds. Wow. How much did that retail for? It's 12. 12, yeah, yeah 12 10, 12 quid, yeah. And the propellant was about 8 quid, I yeah. think. Yeah. By the throne. <laughs> <laughs> Just see my legacy is yeah. cash for the price cash scalping gun. on yeah because you'd, you'd get like a clamp pack you'd get the air gun in there or the yeah the air yeah. gun then you'd have like your little bottle and then a coil of um, yeah. I mean cable. yeah I mean I would want that tape measure yeah 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 we had to fight I really think that hard came out that. just as I was leaving the hobby I think yeah in it's um so we we just what we wanted was the stuff on the tabletop to not take you away from the game. Yeah. Hence why this is gold and shiny and styled the way it is and has yeah. it's got the Sigmarite stuff. Sigma right letters, which actually mean nothing, but there you go. If people, people have have wondered what all this I, meant. For I years. meant tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> it means absolutely nothing. Um which is very mean of us because people spent ages trying to work out what it actually meant. Oh that's can an unto. Can an unto. Um but we wanted, yeah, so we didn't want people to go, Oh, I'm playing this game, I'm really into the world, I've got this great narrative battle, oh I'm gonna get my like this out, which doesn't look like yeah, yeah. So we wanted the whole game to feel like it was part of part of that universe. Yeah. Um, and I was yeah. going through the PDFs, or the way I was going through the, the the files of the upcoming rulebook, and Dave Garriger and John Blanche had done a load of little filler art or frontis little edge pieces, and one of them was this skull with this little lip hanging down, servo skull with a lip hanging down. I was like, and in my head, I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> we can do that. We can make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it was a nightmare <laughs> and we had to get so we borrowed a sculptor paid him freelance to sculpt the thing for us yeah. and then of course that stuff didn't really work with the Chinese was that Ali? no was it, Ali? it was no. one of the younger guys uh, um, okay. I mean Ed I can't remember oh yes yeah, yeah, um, yeah so we had to send all these files to the Chinese they ended up I think they ended up re- redoing it themselves anyway but we said they had a 3D mock up yeah. and then you pressed the skull and that was, the, the whole mechanism in there was madness I had to work that out and then the tape itself, we had printed it. We didn't want a tape that was yellow. We wanted a tape that was specific. Yeah. So it was in Games Workshop inches, and it only shows Games Workshop quarter and half inches. That's what you get. And only just, it just shows like the inches. And then, yeah. and then the, the number 13 is uh, Imperial Eagle because the 12 High Lords of Terror and the Emperor himself, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the tracks Sweet. on the Land Raider. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So the whole thing. And we're like, we fought really hard. And originally it came in a box and it was all sh- really lovely painted and all this sort of stuff. We had to keep dropping costs, dropping costs, dropping costs. Because like no one, like 10 quid is pushing it. We're never going to get more. Than- and eventually the manufacturer, we thought we'd have to can it because we couldn't afford to paint it. And the manufacturer's like, oh, we'll just absorb the cost. It's oh, really, wow. Yeah. It's really weird for, for yeah. a yeah. Far East manufacturer to just go, no, we're just going to... They, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna cut our margin. See, they loved <laughs> everyone loved the they loved the servo <laughs> skull tape yeah. measure they knew how as much as we did. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of my favourite products. I think they wanted done. to see it in yeah, situation. Could we make that again now with outside the IP? Just call it a helpful skull instead of a servo <laughs> skull and uh, paint the phase logo on the back of it. Yeah, I was at the Perry's fiftieth birthday years ago now, um, and they had like a gaming area, like lots of land centres, and like, there was loads of people from workshop there, just like join them, like wish them happy birthday. And they had a tape measure that was electronic. And I nearly killed Glenn Moore. Because I was like, like that. I was obviously inebriated. And my wife remembers this story well. And I'm like, and he's just like slowly doing that. And because my depth perception was was gone. I just went, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, gagging. I was like, oh God, reverse, reverse, reverse. So he's choking on this tape measure thing. But I'm just thinking now that you could have like a motorised version of the servitor. And try and check people. And you could, you could, you have a separate button so it could say stuff. It, needs to make, no, it does need to make noises. Yeah, doesn't it? yeah. yeah. <laughs> buttons the back. Love it. Um, so that was one of the crazy. And the electrical stuff was always a problem because how do you charge it? What yeah. it now it's easier because you do things with USB. Yeah. Which is partly why everything's just USB now. Yeah. yeah. Because you can get around loads of regulations. Oh, yeah. cool. So like most things are now come with don't tend to come with a proper main slide main supply. Line, yeah. Then there's, then you're suddenly conforming to loads of regulations, yeah. which will get very painful very quickly. Yeah, yeah. That's why we don't we don't we don't do it. You know, we, we did things like the for the one of the releases we did the rangefinder, the yep. little laser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was again we had to go through regulation compliance. We had so to send that blind pilots. Yeah, we had to send, <laughs> we had to send that off to people, and that was just that was shaped like people remember it's shaped like the um, a Space Marine Scout rifle. It to, was scope. yes, yeah, yeah. And you just pressed a little button and it shone a because it was true that edition was true line of sight. Yeah. So you could put it over someone's head, press the little button, and you can get a true line of sight, whether it hit a building or whatever. That yeah. Was good fun. We sold loads of those. I always wanted them to make one like we used to have in the military. I wanted them to make a laser range finder where it told you exactly how many, what the distance was. It would have been great. We tried, we tried. Yeah. You can't do it at that range, and you don't no. get enough return from the miniature. 
you'd have to we, we looked at doing like you literally got a stand with a with like with like a return thing on it and you put the stand by the miniature yeah and it had a mirror so you could get the return off there because lanes range finders they only work with with the return from the yeah yeah absolutely right yeah um when you're in the military you can kind of do it because you use a really high powered one and it's a long way away um, yeah which means the and the great thing is somebody else paid for them <laughs> and when you blind someone you're, you're, you're going to be dropping bombs on them anyway, so yeah, it, doesn't it, doesn't really, it doesn't really yeah. matter too much. <laughs> yeah. It's like they've got to drop a bomb or put a bullet in them from a long range. It's it's a, it's oh, yeah. Relevant, you, the you less of a complaint won't happen. You don't really want to blind them <laughs> when, when you're playing a game with them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we did look at that, but we just couldn't. And then a lot of the ones people think are laser aren't. They're acoustic. Yeah. They use ultrasound. Yep. So you they, they have a laser in them so you can see where you're pointing it. But mm. yeah, Basically it's, dolphin weld. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> dolphin <laughs> Dolphin world. box, especially a dolphin box. <laughs> yeah. and, but you still need a hard return. Or bat box. So again, you'd have to have a... You yeah. have to put something else in to get a return off. Yeah. We looked at loads of stuff like this. So if it's I took that fun. to SeaWorld, would I be communicating with a dolphin? Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> be careful, yeah. I might get excited. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Oh, look at him. Ooh, look at the fin on him. Yeah, go. And then it'll tell you about it. And then it'll tell you that you failed your charge range. Oh, <laughs> 13 inches, mate. Yeah, sorry. Anyway. So we used to really enjoy doing all those because that was a bit more of a lighter side of... Yeah. This, this is kind of cool, but... Like, it's a bit more serious, but doing all that doing stuff. Doing service measures and mad templates with lightning on them and mm. yeah, and, and weird dice. And I was just talk about dice because oh. my favourite dice set ever, and I don't know how much cost was involved in it, was the Lasgun Mag. I've yep. still got it at home somewhere. Yep. I should have brought it. I've never, never seen that one. That oh. was part of the same range, I think, the service goal came out in. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of those because um, you'd have like your dice that went inside the tin. Yeah. And it would just had a lid, and it just looked like a, a Lasgun magazine. Oh, Again, that was one from one of those bits of filler art. Mm. One of them was just a couple of um, Lasgun power cells just lying on the floor. Yeah, I think Dave Gallagher had done it. And we're like, we're looking for a dice tin, and that just looked, oh, that's cool. So it's, 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 it's of that, it's vertical, and it has a plastic, the, all the gubbins that can, actually connects into the Lasgun is plastic, and you pull the side of the pillow off sideways. Oh, that's oh, so man. cool. And then also, I miss that. And then some of the sets came with... I'm going to see how much that is on the <laughs> I've the, got one. <laughs> some of the sets came with little service skull stands. So you had a service... You had like a little left yes. little yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah. And then a service skull coming over the top. So if you, if, if you wanted a dice that you weren't going to throw again, could be objectives or a wound marker mm -hmm. or something, you could just put your dice on that yeah, little left like turn. They were really stand, fun. Yeah. Do you know if I had to work there when you worked out, it have been your biggest cheat? <laughs> go, go on, make it! Make it! <laughs> they were great. But it was really nice because... The game looked like something, or we had this concept in our head that it was actually, it was actually happening, and you were the commander in orbit or in your command mm. thunderhawk or something, yeah, yeah. and you were looking at your hollow hollow screen bay and moving your little things around, and your yeah. little men were responding on the ground. So in our heads, that was kind of the way we were doing it, and almost like the templates you were holding were the that instead of having a computer, you typed your artillery coordinates into. Yeah, there was some technology which no one understood how it worked, and you picked up the scrying device. And that then communicated with the with the battery behind the lines that would lay down the bombardment. It was yeah. all that kind of stuff that was running yeah, through our heads. A bit, bit minority reports. Yeah, but just about. to keep people yeah. people's heads in the game rather than I'm going to get my plastic template out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it is it that? Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. It. Yeah. 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 So like? that's that's uh, sixty dollars. Wow. Wow. Sixty dollars. It's still in its packaging oh, as well. I'm gutted I never got one of them. I'm not one of yeah. the people that's massively hugely excited about dice, but I'm hugely a bit excited about what they come in. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, I love dice. I love oh, you know the one, yeah. the only ones I've got a fiend excited about recently with D &D. was like, them Nagel ones he made a while ago. Well, were, like the pustules. Well, all the yeah, were all the notches were boils yeah. and pustules, but apparently fault. they were awful to that, roll. That was my fault. Yeah, they're terrible to roll. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I never and, and I don't get excited about dice, but I've seen them and a guy was selling on eBay all of his um, Death Guard army off in bits, and he had them dice. And I went. I don't normally get excited about dice, but I love them, and I know they roll badly. Nah, but you use them for wound markers instead. And the, yeah, and that. I was considering that and I went, how much is he selling them for? And it was 70 quid. And I went, yeah, I don't like dice yeah, that much. They got very collectible. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, did, I did yeah. loads of dice. I was the dice man for a very long time. Oh, amazing. So I'm sorry you said that he didn't roll very well. I do apologise. No, um, like generally, we try to balance stuff. Yeah. So that's why you have a one and a six on the opposite faces of a dice. Yeah. So the amount of yeah. material removed on every face is the same. Well, it's seven, isn't it? That's yeah, the so everything adds every up to seven. Every yeah. face adds up to seven on a traditional dice. Um, so then they're reasonably balanced. But then, balancing dice is one of those things. When you really look at it, they don't roll terribly. They're not as balanced as other dice. Yeah. But there was a bit of a rule of call there. Yeah. yeah. And like there was, and the pustules were squidgy, and, oh, and they're in a hard. Don't, don't yeah. keep going on about <laughs> it. <laughs> You're making so, it worse. So they were double shot. So the first shot in the machine was polyurethane. 
was a polyurethane um, rubber, yeah. so they were squishy. And then it was put that went into another machine, and they shot the hard case around, yeah, the around outside. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Patrick's having a. Oh, oh, no, 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 uh, 130 pounds. Yeah. Well, that guy was selling them cheap then at 70. Yeah, 70, they should have yeah. bought those. They look, <laughs> flipped them. They oh, look yeah. so cool, though. My favourite yeah. set we did were yeah. I did was the uh, Gene Steeler dice. So that was. A, oh, yes, they're clear. So it was yeah. clear with a purple swirl in them. Yeah. And then around those. So that was, that, that, was, that was the first shot. And then they were moving to another machine. Yeah. And then we double shot with a purple cage. It was meant to simulate um, Gene Steeler's eating away at the heart of the Imperium. Mm. Oh, this is now one them as well. I've not even seen one. that. I love it. I love. I love. I love yeah. <laughs> it's, my, it's when I get the, the only to play. Issues I had with dice was when you. So traditionally, the one would be a skull, yeah. and then the six would be the icon of the chapter. So if it was like Imperial Fist yeah. designs, you'd be like Imperial Fist for the six, skull for a one. Boom. Except when you got the Marathi dice. Oh right. Because there was a picture of Marathi. And yeah. then I, the other one was, I can't quite, I think it was like a stylized skull. It would have been Black Library, I don't think we did those. But it was like, so like, I think it's that side that's the six. Whereas the one could have just been a skull. I don't know who designed it. It's those. because. But it was very misleading. For most manufacturers, oh, still that was just the way they set their moulds up. Hmm. So they would design, they would basically, for a normal dice, they'd have their dice ejection moulded on a sprue, just like toy soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they'd have removable faces. And for a lot of manufacturers, the only face, I mean, the manufacturer we were using, the removable face was just that one face. Mm. That's just the way they did it. So that's the one we used. Yeah. And then when we changed manufacturer, we said, everyone had moaned so long. We're like, yeah, fine, fair enough, we get it right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone right. wants the six to be the cool one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My yeah. main ones was the ones with the bullet holes in them. That was the one yeah, I used yeah, around yeah. a day. Mm. Um, a little tin with And you had to pay more to change each face. Or you had to make a whole new mould, and cutting steel is really expensive. So that explains, like sometimes, like the cost of the dice. They're, they're, they're sexy as heck, but yeah, you'd have to yeah, pay you'd a pay more because yeah, yeah. yeah. the whole dice actually the the one was the Aquila, and there was not there was only one marker on that one, which was just an Aquila. There was no skull. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was used to go whenever I rolled the one, it was Aquila. Yeah. So Lord of the Rings dice symbol. are the same. The one yeah. uh, for a long time was the design, like the Eye of Sauron or the White Horse. But that yeah. was yeah, that was that would have been down to would have been dicing games or someone. Yeah. But, that's the one. That's the face that they had on their tool that was removable for that that size of dice. Mm. And then until mm. we started paying more money, again lever leverage that commercial advantage. Yeah. Um, we but we do a whole new tool, or we do a double shot dice, which is all the weird ones. They're all double shot. Or so yeah, you, yeah. You put you have two set. Then you're paying even more money because you've got yeah. two separate tools. Yeah. Per thing, and then we also you put them in the, the tool thing, and we had the removable insert in the tool to change the army logo. So you got uh, your thing. You yeah. had a master batched, color specific lid. With a specific army logo, with it, yeah, they're expensive, but they were really cool. I used yeah. to really, I would, one point, I used to like doing them, but one point I went completely mad because I spent eighteen months basically doing dice. I was like, can please, can I do? And it's probably near. That's probably close to the end when I was like, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I've done. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Gene Steeler dice, uh, forty to sixty pounds oh, on yeah, eBay. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I've never seen them. I've have to have a look at them. Yeah. No. That's so interesting. So, Games Workshop. If, well, I officially, um, officially, affectionately call this the butt plug. You can. Yeah. Uh, a lot of army painters used it was, to well, it, was, it was built around your size anyway, wasn't it? It was. Uh, <laughs> it's not very big. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all had to bend over. That's quite good, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good, thing. <laughs> Sideways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an image. Is this the retrieval tool? <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, but I, I really like this. And I know it got changed recently. Well, we'll say recently, a couple of years. I love the fact that there was like loads of interchangeable heads and they still baffle some of our viewers because like, oh, you know, that did that. You can swap it around. It was all very... And um, it also has the same fitting for universal camera equipment as well. That's because that's cheap and you can get it off the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we were, when we were looking at putting this together, you wanted to make it as cheap as possible and the manufacturer said, well, why don't you use this thing? Cause yeah, three-quarter inch threads, yeah. We can get them for no money whatsoever, which basically means, which is partly the reason this is cheap because that's bit of threaded rod off the shelf that's a three quarter inch thing off the shelf yeah um, this is a funny one because this one came about this was another project entirely this was meant to be a vice interesting so we're looking at a little tiny vice to clamp your little models when you're doing little kind of conversion work um and we tried to do vice a vice several times and it never very successfully 
We did the weird one with the little arm. That was basically yes, it. That was, actually, yeah. that was a kid's toy. That was like the robot from uh, Lost in Space. And that one. And then, but I never. We tried several times to do to do it, and a guy called Toby was working on this. And then one day he basically just went, stuck a model in the jaws of his vice, and it was like, and we're like, <laughs> and then he worked on this, um, and we wanted to get this bit right. And this is about designing a product for yourself. We can design a product for ourselves, which fits our hands. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it fits everyone's hands. Could you pass me that one, Jeff? That's the new one. I'm not fair. Oh, uh, I can indeed. This, this, this one look. that looks even more a bit like yeah. it should be inserted yeah. somewhere. And, and that one's this one. So they've just done this one. I've got one of these. Mm. Um, part of the reason for this is when, you, when you're when painting a miniature, you, you can do it. Follow along at home, everybody. You hold your hand here, you're not, not a lot of tension. Mm. As soon as you start coming in, you can feel tension in your hands. So when you're holding a, a base of a miniature... Yeah, that's quite hard. And at some point, your hand, as we all know, you then suddenly throw your miniature across the room. Mm. Mm. So it's about creating something you can hold without reducing the amount of tension in your hand as easy as possible. And also, you can do all the yeah, weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we wanted to make it as easy as possible for a wide range of that's a red grass someone, games someone one. else's. That's a red grass games one. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Um, so we, the designer. Cadded up a load of different shapes, tons and tons of them, and we went around the business. And we got these. We had a we had a three D printer, but it wasn't good enough kind of for structural stuff. So we sent it off out of house and to get it done in nylon. Um, so we had enough of these uh, these things, and we assembled them. We gave them to loads of people, and then asked them which which is the best one. And eventually, um, there was after a number of prototypes, we came down to this, and this was, and that's how that happened. Yeah. By the way, Mister Peach is so attached to it because it's. I love it. Yeah, because it fits his hand because he's probably the one that chose it. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, I'm not sure why they did this, but having not been in that design team when they did it, I'm yeah. sure there's a really good reason. Oh yeah, yeah. why they decided yeah. to make it thinner. And yeah. I, I, so I don't want to criticise it because I don't know why they did it. And it's probably, as I said, there probably is a really good reason. But it's, you know, I can hold it. And it may just be the people that tested it were, were a different batch, and they decided that yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. would work for them. Um, what was nice about this is. It was so much. It came in. We were like, oh, we're never going to be able to. This needs to be so cheap. Yeah. This needs to be so cheap for people to buy it. Yeah. And when we got the cost back, we we're like, no way. We we're absolutely blown away because it was it was like four or five quid or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we're like, brilliant. Yeah. And then these are these incredible. Yeah, because you used to like boxes of five of them at one point as well. Yeah. And it was like you could just couldn't get them. Yeah. You know, could, flying out out. And these are like Hot six, cakes. seven quid now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're right. I prefer this one. Yeah. But, same. But. Again, I had a hand in designing that. Well, I've never had the need would... to buy that one because I just thought, well, oh, that one works perfectly well. So yeah. I've never... Yeah. What is yeah. this? So... Yeah, so it looks like you come with like some kind of tack as well. So, yeah, the Redgrass Game 1 is the top rotates, so your hand is always in a fixed position, like holding it, I guess, in like in some kind of ergonomic fashion. And you blue tack... Uh, your, your miniatures onto the top. A grey tag, I think you're fine. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Peach. And I think that's Games Workshop's commercial advantage right there. Yeah. Because we can afford... We, we, we say we. Oh, uh, Peachy does as well. I wasn't there long um, enough to do that. <laughs> they, oh, yeah, yeah. They, Same they, they can afford the, the tooling cost yeah. for all these yeah. little parts. They can afford... Also, this can then go to China to have... have all the screws, the, have the, the rod and the, and the springs inserted and be assembled. They can make it in... They probably do these in hundreds, of, order them in well, hundreds well, of thousands. That one blew my yeah. mind was when Peachy abused it by putting a hole in the bottom of the uh, the Votan tank and with a scalpel and then yeah. just screwing that straight to it. And I thought, it's the best way to... That's a great idea. It's best great. way to paint a tank The very ever. first video I did for Warmer TV was was selling that. I'm doing... Um, and that's what I did. Eldar jet bikes that. at the moment and they're really annoying me. Mm. There you, you go. Where, where do you hold them? Yeah. You, know? you, yeah. you, you, you put a hole in the bottom <laughs> so and screw that in. Shut that in. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might get a tap a drill tap and it, mm. that's the same thread as that and then I can yeah. and, and then yeah. I can just screw so this it is in. cool so you get Thank like you, a, Peach. a little plate yeah. that's magnetic so it won't fall over uh, you know, and, you, and then uh, that pops out so I guess there's replacement yeah. tops for yeah it. you could buy replacement tops and swap them over revolutionary 360 mm. action I love it <laughs> no it's, it's, it's really great to see people trying to enter in the same space yeah and you create a low cost product which people obviously find beneficial to the point where and there are I've seen 3D printed versions and yeah and all sorts of stuff I've, I've made a 3D printed version it was rubbish so I went and bought one um, <laughs> on my 3D printer but I think it's great people people come and do this because before there was a walk around heavy metal and all of them had separate ways of doing it yeah the posh ones had champagne corks of course of course they did yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and then some people just had like a, an old base with like some blue tack on it <laughs> oh, I think that's yeah. what I do sometimes think about having because I am quite clumsy with 
put my fingers on something I've just painted as the ones where they have the metal bar around the side. They have the mm. bar that comes out and you can lean it so you, you, you're not. Uh, okay. Which is yeah, quite hard. Yeah. Yeah. I like them feel like very individual solutions that, mm. that individuals have come up for themselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the thing. And so I'm not being critical because these obviously fill, fill a niche. Um, and I don't, um, and I don't know what their need. Well, I don't know what the problems they were trying yeah, to address are. So it's yeah. very, I don't want to be mean about things. But often, so other people's stuff quite often to me feels like they're solving their problem. Yeah, and they're not solving a wider problem. And we'd get it a lot. I mean, Chris came in a few times. Um, oh, I've got this great idea, guys. And we're like, put it in the great ideas book. Yeah, remember yeah. the great ideas book. I do remember the great. So we, had, ideas we, had, book. we had a great <laughs> ideas book, which is basically a massive like A4 uh, bound book, and that was largely there for um, people coming in with great ideas so we so they would write it down because if, if they weren't passionate enough they wouldn't bother writing it down anyway and also it made them think about it properly. you are right though about people doing coming up with things to fix their own ideas i wanted to invent a thing once which was being a shop owner which was like an ipad that i could put in my window that i could then send a text message to so it could leave my customers a message to say oh, why i wasn't there if my child was sick and i had to go to the doctors or something i go sorry we're running late at the doctor's. Well, so you could always be on in your window. And yeah. You were, yeah. Yeah. And my wife said, it just sounds like you've just only tried to invent something just to fix only your own problem. Because <laughs> you work on your own. Because otherwise, you'd just say, John, when you open the shop, I won't be there for half an hour because I'm at the doctor's. Yeah. And going, you, because you work on your own in a barbershop, she says, you're only fixing your own problem. And I was like, I'm sure I'm not. But I think she probably yeah. was ultimately right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's lots of single workers out yeah, there. Yeah. So. That's why yeah. I was having a bigger team. We had three product designers, two senior designers, a chemist, a, yeah. a, yeah. a, a paint, we had so many painters specific, towards the end of their graphic, oh, yes. we had yeah, their yeah, own graphic yeah. designer. Yeah, yeah. I love that the chemist behind contrast paint yeah. worked in Warhammer World. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, it was in retail. Stroke a lot, wasn't it? For a time. He, he yeah. was, uh, when I was at One World, it was a key timer, part timer there while I was still doing his university course, oh, wow. doctorate or whatever. And then he just joined Mick and Ray in the uh, what was called Q Lab uh, for a long time because pretty much like a James Bond, I'd, sort yeah. of like a back back room. Let's just make some cool stuff. So he worked there for a long time. Mm. Then, that makes me think of uh, that opening scene. Have you ever seen that gangster movie Layer Cake? Mm. Yeah, and it has that bit where um, Tom Hardy's cutting all the cocaine up, and he says, "This is Clarky, double first industrial chemistry." So I uh, got a pair of student loans somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, I haven't watched Layer Cake in a while. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to do it now. Should we go on some Patreon? Questions I was gonna then? say, oh, yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah, time is time is marching well, I'm on. Gonna, I'm um, gonna hop while this happens and watch. Just do it. Yeah, <laughs> do it. So some some of the questions I feel like we've already covered lots of the topics. Okay. So so I won't necessarily go with those. So Alex asked a question about contrast paint, but we've had a lot of discussion about that. He also says, "What's your favourite cheese?" Mm. That's well, a, sta- that's a, a cheese Stilton. Question. Stilton. Oh, yeah, Michael Stilton. Good, Good man. Choice. Easy. Yeah. Good choice. Um, who are... socks. <laughs> Do you know what I've just realised? Every time someone gives an answer for cheese, I always say good choice. And I think, maybe I just like too much cheese. <laughs> yeah. That's why you have cheese platters. <laughs> yeah. So much yeah. cheese. I do, I do love a good cheese. Um, who at GW decides the flavour of the paint? <laughs> Ag- Agrax is always a nice treat, mid-paint job. It's probably our friend the chemist. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but it would be good to have more flavours to keep it interesting. <laughs> mm. I see. Obviously, I'd suggest you don't eat the paints. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although it's non-toxic, it doesn't mean they're safe. Yeah. Um, but they won't kill you right now. <laughs> it's probably, probably the chemist at the paint manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris L asks: Has there ever been consideration at Games Workshop about selling other types of paint, like oils or enamels? Too hard to use. Yeah. So it goes back to that trumpet. Yeah. Trumpet. trumpet yeah. Wide yeah. end of the trumpet. Yeah. Stuff. I'm sure. I'm sure the guys are looking and girls are looking at that trend of using yeah. oils. Yeah, it's high enough. Yeah, and they're yeah. probably looking at a solution which isn't oil based to do that job quicker and faster. Yeah. yeah. So again, ninety percent of the ninety percent the effect for ten percent the effort. Um, yeah. One hundred percent. They're looking at yeah. something like that, like panel liners or and something. panel lining yeah. and stuff to do yeah. something along those lines, but probably not using that paint because again, commercial advantage, making it different, adding skulls, yeah. all of that stuff. And also making it wide end of the hobby trumpet. Yeah. Yeah, there's loads and loads of uh, all that sort of stuff. That's really fun. Um, we joke about... Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to start again, because uh, brain no worky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Matt asks, we all joke in the hobby about eating paint. How bad for you is it? <laughs> um, get non-toxic, but non-toxic um, doesn't, yeah. doesn't mean it's... I'm sure you'll be fine, but there's a reason why everyone knows... Everyone points their brush on them in with their spit, right? Yeah. Everyone, and everyone knows we do it. 
there's a reason why these guys never, ever, 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 ever show it on camera. Yeah. And also, someone will probably have an allergic reaction to yeah. something in that paint. Yeah. Because people have allergic reactions to, to, all sorts. to, to oxygen. Yeah. yeah. So, see. So you, see, so you never know. Yeah. You might be allergic to some very specific anti-matting compound that's been put in that paint. <laughs> so that's why we don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of ingredients in those paints, isn't there? And that's why yeah. people get it wrong because they don't realise quite how much. I was saying, but part of the reason they got this wrong is they they didn't use that company. They tried yeah. to copy it. Yes. They, and some of them, for some of them, they needed to add a chemical which they hadn't realised. Yeah, yeah, I've heard this. It's yeah. super difficult. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Contrast paints took five, six years to develop. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. One key ingredient. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, yeast and bread. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't getting bread without yeast, are you? <laughs> yeah. Baking on the painting face. Um, yeah. Or rising so, bread, should I say? You still get bread. It's just be don't. Uh, hey. Sorry, good. <laughs> oh. And thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, <laughs> if everything was a time to finish. Yeah. Oh, taking a bit oh, of we a... overheated no 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 we're just taking a little bit of a knock i think there we go get you in the okay. middle uh who is the poor person that has come up with the law connected paint names you said you that mentioned was that was your boss, boss. Yeah. yeah went mad in a room um mm. what is your opinion on retro paints like walkerless nostalgia 94 range it's great mm. yeah go for it i mean i think i think it's games workshop can't make everything yeah, and yeah. I think if people want to do that, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. especially when um, they get those. I'd love yeah. to have a play kids. with some of them because I used to paint with them. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Some of the recipes were terrible. Mm. You look at the old, the really old paint range. Um, they're all done by heavy metal at different times. A lot of them, um, and they, some of the formulas. When we went to the new paint manufacturer and we showed them, we're like, "Why? Have you, why are they using this medium? Why are they? Because it was a legacy thing. Yeah. yeah. Someone made a decision. Yes. In isolation, twenty years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, some of the paints just didn't cover. What was the blue one, the really dark blue that just did not... It was... Oh. What, in the cur current? In the, in the really... In the older ones. Oh, that... Oh, uh, yes, I know. You know exactly. Yeah. Blue, blue in the pot that <sighs> went purple on the miniature. Yeah. Absolutely Nauseate, terrible. No, not nauseating. Was it nauseating blue? <laughs> Might be nauseating blue. <laughs> it sounds blue. like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's nauseating blue. But we had issues like that. Yeah. So... It, it's like when... You, you have a biro that leaks it's that kind of like yeah. weird kind of colour really weird yeah. purple colour terrible yeah. someone made a decision years ago in isolation it yeah. goes forward to 30 oh years. fascinating uh, brilliant and then they finish off the question by uh, uh, blaming you for sit or paint pots yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you for your work All and good. making me spill dozens of non-dropper bottle pots over the years <laughs> thank so, you very much uh, <laughs> you made Games Workshop even more money yeah <laughs> um uh, and I think I probably know the answer to this one. Um, how do you think the hobby products team at Games Workshop feel about the recent surge uh, of ranges from other companies like AK Interactive, Monument Hobbies, Stiff Competition, or did GW Citadel Paints have a captive market? I think it's fantastic R&D. Yeah. Because all these companies are making all these great products. Mm. Games Workshop can come in and make a greater version of that product or yeah. make a product which is... It's easier to use, less toxic, mm. and they can sell it on. Yeah. So I also, you know, if they, and it's going to sound really harsh, they're not really competition. No. Okay. Um, because it is, to a certain extent, it is a captive market. Yeah. We, yeah. Without going to workshop, none of these companies would exist. You know, wargaming would exist, but it would be historical. It would be very... Yeah. 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 Like, without Games Workshop, we wouldn't exist. Yeah. So yeah, it, absolutely. Games Workshop is the... And I think some of the people need, sometimes need to realise that Games Workshop is... The reason they exist in the first place, mm, yeah. and Games Workshop has a really good run of getting money off these people. And as they get further down the hobby trumpet, mm. then they start looking outside of the trumpet for, yeah. for other sources, and that's where they lie. And that's, well, that's why there's so many companies that do games work, <laughs> do miniatures in Nottingham, but all because of Games Workshop. Yeah, lead, lead belt. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the lead belt. Yeah, all uh, stuff. And there. it's so I don't think I don't think they say it's a threat at all. Yeah. Um, and they'll and when the the and it takes also they need to get things right before they release because there's there's a bigger impact in getting yes. something wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they may like any large company. It's like turning an oil tanker. It takes longer to turn it. Yeah. A lot of these guys are little speedboats and they can twist and turn. Yes, and react. And also they quicker. can to a certain extent they can design a product, dump it, and move on. Yeah. And they sell out and they're gone. And they're yeah. Game Workshop can't do that because you painted your army. You need the same color. So I th I think I think ultimately I, we we I used to see it as a really great R and D. Yeah. Go and see what other people are doing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, so what are the processes Games Workshop goes through in... Maybe we've covered this a little bit. Uh, what are the processes GW goes through in deciding to do a paint range refresh slash uh, 
chance and then implementing it, e.g. why are the paint ranges usually redone? Normally change of manufacturer. Yeah. So historically, it's been change of manufacturer. Ah, interesting. Um, it's, the largest, it's been the largest driver. Um, contrast came, we've talked about why contrast came about. Yeah. But the, the Citadel colour change came about from a change of manufacturer. Yeah. Um, and that just gave us the opportunity. Look, we're going to redo all these. Is this what we want to do? Yeah. Because yeah. now we, yeah. because we are going to redo them from the ground up. And even if we, even if we're going to stay with the same colours, we still need to redo them from the ground up. Mm. Is this what we want to do? Yeah. yeah. And then the, we, yeah, we talked extensively about why why we did contrast. Yeah. We just saw an opportunity. Yeah. 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 They've asked a little bit about paint bottle design. We talked about that. Oh, this is interesting. And why do some paints get new formulations while keeping the same name? They found out a better way of doing it. Yeah. Or um, the manufacturer's gone, oh, we've actually, although you told us this and we did it, we found a better medium to use with it. Yeah. Or we've got a new pigment coming in. Sometimes it can be because the pigment, their pigment supplier yeah. can't give them the pigment they want. Uh, yeah, so they have to use a different... You have to use a, re have to do a re yeah. reformulation anyway. Yeah. Um, and you try and get it as close as you can. Yeah, because I, before I left, I remember the chemist... The chemist, we should call him the chemist. chemist. He's definitely played by Jason Statham. <laughs> yeah. um, and he passed on a load of like metallics. Uh, this was like probably like six, eight months before I left. It was like, yeah, they're getting reformulation. The colours haven't changed. Yeah. So it's still Balthazar's gold. It's still Iron Break. It's just that the whatever's inside it yeah. covers better and does what it needs to do better. So the colour hasn't yeah. really changed. Because you, you've talked about Gilman Fresh. Oh, that's changed. It's changed. Yeah, yeah. That, so I don't know if that is down to the batch i don't know if that's down to like it's being a reformulation but what ha the tones i was getting from gunman flesh when oh, i first started using it is more yellowy now and less red mm. um so I, I used to get some really nice ruddy fleshes by using that over rack off thin down whereas now it, it looks a little bit anemic okay it may yeah. it may be it could be a number of things it could be they can't get the pigment mm. um, yeah um it could be it's a bad batch yeah, it's unlikely. It does yeah. sometimes they do creep through. Yeah, we've had a um, few, yeah. Um, or they have found a better way of doing it. Yeah, which just changes the colours. Just slightly. changes the colours yeah. of doing it. Um, yeah. We, I remember, is it Red Spirit Gold was the first really expensive gold? Yeah, yeah. And um, we were more picky with that than Rolls Royce were. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. The rep from H and G was like, "Yeah, where well, this is higher spec than Rolls Royce paint their cars with." And we were like, "That's cool." That's Shame. awesome. Shame we can't tell anyone. <laughs> but I can tell you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that stuff is really good. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I use a lot of AK golds because I, I find that it's it's cheaper. Yeah. But it gets a decent, similar co coverage and it's got a similar... Uh, well, it's not gold, it's brass. <laughs> but it looks like Retributor <laughs> armor. Yeah. It's yeah. the same colour. It's like my, my go-to sort of like white gold, which is like a mix of silver and gold, Retributor armor and yeah. iron and steel, um, is bronze from like other companies Thanks so i'll that. just say i'm painting this gold it's a good question bronze but yeah. it's gold but yeah it's using bronze um, that's, that's you... a really good question I, I don't think i've got a, yeah. a, a proper answer for that no um, no other than there was possibly yeah unavailability of materials yeah or, or they found a better way of doing it yeah yeah uh phil has asked three questions uh 3D. but <laughs> we've covered all of them already oh uh oh. talked about the og painting handle which we've done uh, the new one, which is smooth, which we've kind of talked about, and also limiting the number of, of cans and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, L Smith uh, has gone to great uh, pains to say this is all theoretical. Uh, if I'm locked in a room high up in a tower, two guards outside, bracket, armed, both have two arms, close bracket. <laughs> what five hobby tools, paints, etc., would you recommend to help me escape? Again, this is theoretical. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's in a tower somewhere needs help. L Smith, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Does that cry for help? Yeah. Um, I'm going to use it as an example to talk about my favourite ever hobby tool. Ooh. I think he only needs one. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, which is my favourite hobby tool, which is the mold line scraping tool. Mm. Controversial. Um, because this, we did this for when we did fine cast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I won't waste your time now, but we could talk, talk about that one. Um, <laughs> we could do a whole, no, we could do a whole thing about show fine on fine cast. Um, and fine cast had its problems, so we needed. Did it? Yeah, yeah I, never, it. I never, I never had the mention. <laughs> did it? Yeah, problems. Never heard of that before. Um, allegedly, it had some problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or some some improvements could be made by the user to, to the, fine, <laughs> the beautiful fine cast model. Um, 
so we, we vended a series of products, which was like the little brushy thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and the mold line scraping tool. And liquid green stuff. The liquid green stuff. Three sculpture models. <laughs> which is basically the Tamiya white stuff with green in it. Yeah, yeah. Green, that's what it is. Um, and I came up, and then there were other mold line scraping tools, but we also needed, because you had to work on fine cast and we're selling to Hobby Trumpet, little mm. Johnny Jane, mm, yeah. um, can't sell them a knife. So they can't clean the model up. So we had to send a non-blunt thing to clean the model up. Yeah. So we came up with that. So I, I, I whittled loads of these out of cardboard and got the, got, got the shape about right and then sent it off to get manufactured. And it came back and they deburred it because everything else we did, they always deburred. So we didn't have that sharp enough edge. Yeah. We had to tell them to like leave the stamping edge on to make mm. sure it was sharp enough. But I love this thing. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I've used it lots and I used to use it with like some of the build guides and stuff, but I just prefer a knife. But I understand... It's the same with glue, like super glue and plastic glue. They're kind of watered down, aren't they, really? Because of like the same age. Same reason. Yeah, because um, of kids. <laughs> I'll keep going forever. The, the, the super glue has got retarder in it. Yeah. To make it go off slower. So little, so they don't stick themselves together. So there are, there are for more experienced users, there are definitely better super glues than just <laughs> yeah. the shop, right? Yeah. But for less experienced users, um, they're, it's not good. Mm. Giving them really fast action. Yeah, yeah. Is, Super glue is, is not, not a good thing. Yeah. Giving, giving little, little people knives is not a good thing. And also, yeah. good scalpels take a lot of, quite a lot of practice to use properly. Mm. You get blade chatter, and we've all done it. When, yeah. you, when you run your blade yeah. over and it goes, yeah. and it digs yeah. in. Yeah. So that's, that was thick enough not to give blade chatter. They couldn't cut themselves with it. You could sell it to a 14-year-old. Yeah. And it's quite a kind of oh. encompassing of all the stuff we've talked about. Yeah. Previously, yeah. it kind yeah. of rides into that. And then we used our commercial advantage and stuck massive bronze handles on yeah it. yeah which Sorry, we used to uh, prime some magnetized um <laughs> the no, abuse we, of my we, beautiful products yeah we, we we've got another puppet swap video um, and it, it's they're all magnetized so we stuck some arms on we there. needed something metal quick so i would yeah. use, i would use a mold line scraping tool because it's it's not sharp so mm. yeah the wind, the wind, there's no chance of cutting yourself you cut yourself with yeah, it yeah, when you're attacking these, arm, these armed men <laughs> 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 Men with arms, fantastic. Go for the uh, eyes, Liam. I'd have just thrown the servo skull um, <laughs> tape measure outside. They'd have been so in awe how amazing it was. <laughs> and then I'd have just sneaked out. <laughs> You'd have made a buzzing noise. And it'd be like, yeah, ooh. ooh. <laughs> I would have gone with a me- me- mechanical motorised... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, just choke yeah, just choke the tape measure, yeah. <laughs> just choke from a distance. <laughs> What's up, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody please screenshot Peachy just holding an imaginary tape measure in his mouth. <laughs> that's going to happen. That's the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, once it's out there, it's out there for us. And, yeah. and what we could call it instead of the trumpet, we'll call it trombones and butt plugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you, trombones. So you have, you have yeah. So I think you had you had one hand on the tape measure in your mouth, and then you you were reaching for the that. yeah yeah. Um, and then on a more serious note, Michael asks, uh, "What hobby product did you want to make but didn't?" Ooh, it would be the plasma pistol paint dryer. So, yeah, yes. whichever one. Yeah, we just. I'm already. We would have done it, but it, we would have done it. But it was the electrical. It was the mains plug electrical issue yeah, that stopped yeah. us because that would have been really cool. It'd have been really stupid. But if we can sell tape measures for ten quid, but nowadays we can you, sell a plasma pistol. You could do USB version though. We right? could probably couldn't draw enough power, but maybe uh, maybe it could maybe it could for a miniature. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, his hair dryers yeah. require a yeah. lot of energy. That, yeah. You know that's why you never see a wireless hair dryer. Yeah. And, oh yes you know yeah. barber shops and hairdressers try and make everything wireless as quickly as they can i don't all my clippers are wireless but you still need to plug you could do it you need like an 18 volt thing on it and it would yeah. last no and i should draw yeah anyway, we're getting really technical now. <laughs> yeah oh, just that's the designer line. in me already goes oh there's a th- oh, yeah if you come oh, up to my shop and i'll start ooh, telling you ooh, things ooh. i need <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so we have a few questions from mike and toby why doesn't dw do dropper bottles which we've covered uh, I think he throws some shade at White Scar Spray. Uh, Does he throw Agrax Earth shade at White Scar Spray, or is it just <laughs> attitudes <laughs> shade? Are we talking night shade? Um, <laughs> I think you might think that you already work there, uh, or, or that you still work there, sorry, because he yeah. said, uh, can we have glaze paints back, please? I was using them. You can just say um, yes if you want. Uh, no one else did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used them we put yeah. in some videos but that, that was what tracked was no one really bought them no that's, why, that's why we did the video to show glazing um, if it doesn't exist it's generally it's generally because we didn't not because we didn't like it yeah it's because no one bought it or no one not, not again, it's that it. it's, yeah. it's not making not, 100,000 pounds yes, it's not making 50 quid people. that's just not enough money yeah, to make it worthwhile yeah, yeah. Uh, if you could can, read can I just chuck in there side? yes of course um, there are contrast paints that are very close to the glazes so Talisar Blue 
um, Frost Heart, uh, Push, if you mix those two together, is, is like the blue version. Yeah. Um, Bar Red, if you think that down, that's close enough to Blood Letter. Um, Imperial Fist or Flash Gets Yellow, I think it's called. Not Flash Gets Yellow, uh, Bad Moon Yellow. Then those down, close enough to the yellow. And the green, I would probably say Carandrus Green. So if you thin those down, very similar. Yeah. You're probably looking at the ones which have basically raw pigment in. Yeah. Because the reason Imperial Fist is really good, I think... It's part single, of my time. Single it's a pigment. single pigment. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically why. So if one knows about printing, CMYK, yeah. it's basically yellow. Yeah, yeah. new imperial fish brings. It is. Um, yeah. So the blue, just as an aside, um, getting sidetracked, the reason I came across you guys is I was starting my new Iandan army, first models I've painted in about six years, mm. and I was looking for how to paint yellow, and I came across Peachy's guide on. Yeah. I was like, oh, I know that, yellow. man! <laughs> yeah. And he did the pink, you did the pink, the pink, the yeah. pink base coat and the zenithal rattle can. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't own a paintbrush, I want a rattle can stuff. Yeah. And I was like, that is amazing. Yeah. And it is. Uh, I've just I, done I, it. I was so... Blew, not, my, my, blew my mind. I'm not convinced, because <laughs> we were talking about it, and I was just like, that's going to look weird. I'm not convinced. And then amazing. looking at Goober yeah. Town Hobbies, uh, so Brent uh, from Goober Town and Casey from eBay Manager Rescue, they they both have done it, but they also have um, a podcast called Paint Bravely. It's worth watching if you've never seen it. Really good. Uh, I like listening to them talking about... Uh, uh, kobolds they go on about kobolds a lot oh, right. Brent's very very fond of kobolds um, he's but a yeah, very that, scientific I, man isn't he I, I'd seen yeah. it I wasn't convinced I was like what a silly idea pink and white and then did it I was like I'm amazed it's become my favourite way of doing yellow yeah so. I, saw, I saw I think it was Fletcher from uh, who paints he's like the studio painter for tabletop tactics he uh, does yes, yeah, yeah. a red undercoat with a white zenithal uh. and apparently that has similar but maybe deeper yeah deeper wouldn't it? deeper than pink interesting um yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's the name of the show. <laughs> At least it should be. Um, brilliant. Uh, someone has asked, if you got to redesign anything that you did, what would it be? I'd make the base paints lighter or put more base mm. paints in that are lighter because then you can use them for dry brushing more. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, and one of the things I don't like is the, is the dry paint. Yeah. With, it, was a, it was an idea. It didn't really work. It's. I think we should have dropped it a lot earlier and put in a, another range of lighter base paints. It's something I talked about on the live Thursday's live show actually it was someone was having trouble with yellow and they were painting Avalanche so they sprayed the model white they painted Avalanche Sunset so they're now making the model darker mm. to then paint a lighter yellow over the top of it to then do another y- lighter yellow on top yep. of that I was like you just need to remove the Avalanche Sunset yep. and use flash kits or your yellow straight over white because yep. y- yeah like the Fang was always the weird one you had to make the model darker to then make it lighter, lighter again and then, to, and then you have to paint the whole thing with the layer paint which didn't so some of the stuff didn't really yeah, work yeah. and I think we should have been braver not, maybe not to admit our mistake but go base 2.0 yeah, and yeah. bring out another range of just ditch the dry paint yeah because we did the scenery yeah. paints the was, dry paints yeah we, 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 did, we did the scenery paints and <laughs> I the, like them just because they're base paints yeah, yeah they were base paints big tubs of base paint um, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, we, but we had to put um, with a massive like 250 mil oh wow so the for not wow. very much money. I've got a yeah. massive tub of steel legion drab at home. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> and, and, but, we had, but we changed it to purple or something. Yes. Because what we didn't want to say Sorry, is yeah. you can buy 250 mil of, yeah. of this paint. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was designed for dry brushing and we just used a base paint. Yeah. That's all we did. Yeah. With a bit wow. of cardboard. Yes, yeah. We used, they used the interior using... cardboard as a pad. It was like... And that, so I think we should have done that. If I, did, if I was to change anything, mm. it would be that and ditch the dries. Trying to think yeah. what I still use. Yeah. I use dry for something at the moment. Oh, it's the riser rust. It's the first. It's the first color I do when I'm doing my Mars yeah, yeah. bases. I start with riser rust and work my way up. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, that was a technical. So that was a little bit different. Yeah, it's been changed to dry now. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah been it's dry so all now, the yeah. Um, texture yeah. paints have been relabeled to technical as well. Oh, when they move them over. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, a few people uh, have talked about Games Workshop's white paints. Um, but to quote one chap that I think summed it up in quite an amusing way, uh, which I mentioned earlier, Will uh, Cornish says, please explain Corax white and justify its crimes. <laughs> right. So white paint is interesting. Uh, white paint, it has a really, really, t- really, really tiny molecule. So white has, other than yellow, it's got like the smallest molecule, oh. which means it's really hard to get over stuff. Yeah. Um, because like every, what, what, what's beneath it bleeds through. Yeah. Um, so you either have to use lots of thin layers, which is a pain. Yeah. Start even with the sprays are difficult. It can mm. be really chalky because you have to put so much on to get coverage that they, you end up with drying issues and they, get, they can get really chalky as it yeah. goes on. So the way around that, and we were told this by the paint supplier, they're like, you're doing it wrong, guys. And we're like, what? I says, what you need to do is make it grey. And we're like, what? Mm. Um, because the black pigment is massive. 
Yeah. So you put a tiny bit of black into your white paints, which makes them really light grey. And because the black molecules, I, don't, I can't forget the number, but it's like 20 times the size of yeah, the white yeah. pigment, that blocks loads of the light, and you use that. So Corax white is slightly grey. Yeah. And, and that's, I don't know what he doesn't like yeah. about it, but that's one of the things. And also, to get coverage, you have to really have it. You have to put so much pigment in so they yeah. can be a bit gloopy. Yeah. Because yeah. Because you have to put so much white in to make yeah. it white. I've recovered a lot of Corax white over the years. Yeah. Uh, by mixing a little bit of water, giving it a good mix, giving it a good shake yeah. and stuff. There, I remember your boss um, often going, just get a cappuccino whisk. And it was like, <laughs> cool, that's, that's your way you fix. Your pro- your product that's not working is I now have to go and buy yeah. another product to solve that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously they're not super expensive from like Amazon stuff. Like Seven that. quid. Yeah. 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 So you could, if, if you're going to be using it a lot, then it makes sense to invest in something like What's that. What's happening but, is because there's it's so the molecule signs are so dissimilar between the white bit and the black bit. Yeah. Yeah. They separate, they separate really easy. Yeah. yeah. Which has always freaked me out because I've seen this to, to Liz. Like I always find it really bizarre that my white paint, Corax white, is so close to like white. Yeah. Which is, you know. It's, Ever so slight. If it's yeah. next to other colours, it looks like white. If it's next to white scar, then it yeah. looks. A you bit paint odd. it on white, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I always find out. Well, I've not used it for a while. When it separates, it goes like a black oil. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. how can I? How shaking this black liquid? <laughs> when I shake it, how does that turn white? That is like a science in my head. That I just don't understand. I like, want you. What? I want you shook it. You've got about ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Before it starts going <laughs> back again. Part of the problem was Corox white was originally a spray paint. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and it when it's in a spray paint, you can mix it. Yeah. yeah, putting it in a bottle it makes it mu- it's much harder to mix in a bottle. Yeah, I think that's part of the problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. but to get yeah. the coverage, that's kind of what you have to do. Yeah, because um, otherwise, white's just a pain. Yeah, yeah, no, agreed. Fantastic. Um, Actually, yeah, titanium white, uh, which is yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, AK yeah, do a great monument. white, yeah. Monument Hobbies do a great yeah, white. I've not played with them, so um, yeah, yeah, so it'd yeah. be really interesting to have a play. Um, yeah. We'll get good. some in a bit, uh, pop it out. Um, but uh, it was my first use outside a workshop my first paint outside a workshop when I started working here with Pat and I got some bold titanium white and I started using it it was like I'll try this it's really good white and I thinned it down and it covered really well I was like and I thinned it down some more and it covered really well I wonder what they've done and I, it's, apparently it's got bits of titanium in it so I don't know if I'm not a really? chemist or what? a scientist does it really? apparently so yeah. well most white pigment is, tit- is um, titanium anyway it's how they make it oh so right. white, white pigment is, is um, most white things you have you, you your toothpaste, your washing detergent, everything oh. is full of titanium. Full of titanium. Wow! So that, it's the same same pigment everyone else uses. They've just mm. done. They've, I don't, I don't got know, more I don't, of it. They yeah. might put loads of it in. I don't yeah. know what they've done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah just right. it's mad. You can thin it down and still get decent coverage. Really yeah. insane. It's really clever. I, I, I'm not. I'm very happily to sit here and say, well, I'm one. I don't work there anymore. Yeah. And but two, Games, Games Workshop products were designed for a to a cost yeah. to, a, to a margin for a specific audience. Yeah. 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 Not to make the best. Not to make the best. Like, because Apart from Retributor Armour, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> amazing stuff. Um, probably been surpassed now. But I think, yeah, I think that's the message I want to get across to people. Yeah. Really. The reason I came on this is to understand that message, mm. you know, that it, they're designed for a point to a price for a certain person. Yeah. And that may not be you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah, I, I think that's my biggest takeaway from it is is like when people are like, why don't, Games Workshop do this and it's like well just, you can just get it from somewhere else it's fine yeah. and that is totally fine I mean and, yeah. if I was to look back now if I was using if Black Legion didn't exist I'd be using Black Templar I would have stopped using Black Templar for the Express version of Black or the, even the Army Painter 2.0 yeah uh, I forget what the Black's called now Grim um, Black um, yes, I think yeah because they're, they're really nice they're, they're the right tone to Black whereas Black Templar had a bit of a blueness to it a bit of a greeny blueness to it yeah. which is fine if you wanted that kind of tone um, but it's still a lot thinner, whereas Black Legion covers really well. You can It's got a single pigment and you can thin it down and get some good coverage. Yeah, I like Until one. that happens and that changes, I'll continue using mm. Black Templar as yeah. my predominant black. Um, yeah. This is awesome. I bounce so, between that and AK Black Rubber. Which oh, I Black Rubber, yeah, yeah. Free. I do really like the AK Blacks. Yeah. yeah, Very yeah. Nice. Um, I'm not going to ask any more questions because I think we've... we've um, <laughs> We've gone over our two-hour mark. Whoa! Um, oh, it's an and, exclusive. Uh, love that. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, and and I I am fascinated by all of your answers. So I could probably sit here all day. Um, <laughs> I think I'm just really dumb. And then you can say, "Oh yeah, white pigment is titanium," and I'm like, "Mind blown." Titanium dioxide. <laughs> yeah, it's just come to me. Ah, yeah. oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, which is fascinating. But yeah, thank you so much for coming it's on. A real pleasure. I thank feel you. like I've learned a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, it's been insane. I mean, yeah. I, I even worked next to him for. A- <laughs> Years eating biscuits and talking sharp. As it's we, been really as nice. It's been really nice to come on. It's been really nice to answer your questions. Thanks for all your patrons. Yeah. Um, 
I just wanted to kind of set the world straight a little yeah. bit. Because, <laughs> and I don't take it personally, again, yeah. because I didn't design these things for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. I am lamenting so many things that now I wish I owned, <laughs> <laughs> and I wish were made. Yeah, <laughs> still, yeah. No, appreciate you coming on, Tom. And thank you very much for your time, taking out. And uh, yeah, as always, hit the like and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to become a patron and join in, just you know, go onto our Patreon website and have a look there. You can get some feedback from me, some one-to-one sessions. Join our Discord community, which is full of happy, friendly people. Lots of happy. Win some great prizes. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, probably next show we'll look at doing the next month's worth of yes because we've already got the uh, the Soul Shackle the Army and yeah. the Gary Morley so yeah sculpted a figure it's very first we've, we've got his figures. first ever green yeah, stuff that he ever did and it's it just behind really, you we'll show you and it's just really cool yeah. as well yeah. really I just cool. thought maybe I could use the um, uh, Lasgun dice back as a giveaway <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Anymore. No. <laughs> That's no. 60 quid. No, well, I'll be yeah. about that. You know, you know even, yeah. though yeah. even though I'm admin, can, uh, a part of the admin team, can I still go up and join Patreon? Just to yeah, to just, yeah, just to get the dice. Yeah. <laughs> just to get the dice. Cool. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you.